All right, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. We are about ready to get the pro draft underway and uh, get this game started. So as we get into the pick bands here, I want to say thank you very much to Lamrod, Limpin' Lions, and Limitless Havoc for letting me stream the game today. Much appreciated. Best of luck to both teams here. The first band we are going to see is a Mordekaiser band. Ooh, they're going back and forth quickly. we got a Mordekaiser band coming through. The Jax band. Looks like this could be a lot of respect to the top laners here. We'll see a Zaya band next. Her ultimate makes her very hard to lock down, and she is uh, very strong right now. I've been seeing her a lot of the program, uh, a lot of the uh, scrims that I've been doing. Gragas, that could be towards one of our players, Graggy Patty. We'll have to see. Samira, still very strong, so that's a good band. Her ability to just dash in there, set off her combos, and then ult an entire team is ridiculous. And Jin ban. So, two ADCs ban out on the side of blue. Um, a little bit more respect towards the top lane from the side of red. We'll have to see what the B1 pick is. And Hecram, they're going to go with a jungler. Hecram, I haven't seen played a whole lot. He's been getting banned a lot, but I'm excited to see him get in here. His uh, gank's very strong. He's very quick. There we go. Sorry about that. There we are. So we have uh, Hecram versus Nocturne. I love the Noct pick. That could be flexed over to top side. I'm not sure. He's been really good in lane. Um, his Q allows him to push. His R gives him great uh, roam potential. But I expect to see that in jungle. We've got the Senna pick. Followed by the Gwen. And Gwen is still just super strong right now. Her sustain, her ability to cut through champions, just busted. And they do go with the Recon pick here. Interesting to see a support pick that early. Um, it looks like they're saving their ADC and their uh, mid as counter picks, or at least a little bit later in the match. So I'm excited to see where this turns out. And then an Azir pick. I like the Azir pick. Conquer, since you're in the stream, real quickly, what team are you on? Limitless Havoc or uh, Lamrod Limpin' Lions? I just want to make sure I call the game properly the whole time. Havoc, okay, cool. So red side is Limitless Havoc. Blue side is Lamrod Limpin' Lions. You guys might get called Limpin' Lions for short, so I don't mess this up. And we see the Urgot band come through. I uh, love Urgot top. He's very strong. Rumble, another good band right now. And then Twitch. Nobody wants to have a Twitch. He's kind of like a Shaco. You don't know where he's at, and you have to assume he's always around you, and that's a scary feeling. The last band is going to come through as a... Potentially a Cho'Gath here. Okay. 
And so we will see the Choban here. Like I said, it looks like a lot of respect given to the top side here. Um, I'm excited to see what they pick. We got a Poppy locked in. Poppy becomes a tanky girl. She has a huge ability with her ultimate to be able to change a team fight and knock somebody out of there if it's the right person. Um, if it's a tank or your DPS, you can find yourself in a very winnable fight after that. And we'll see Sivir locked in. I like the Sivir pick. Her uh, spell shield, her ability to poke, and her uh, ultimate all round out really well for team fights and winning in lane, so I'm excited for that. Paired with the Rakan, he can get the knock up, a little heal off, and hit the charm. That's a lot of damage from the output of the Q and everything. And a LeBlanc will be the last one. And we'll see what the R5 pick is here. Silas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the team we are going to get. We've got the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions with Hecram, Gwen, Rakan, Sivir, and LeBlanc. And we've got the side of Limitless Havoc with Nocturne, Senna, Azir, Poppy, and Silas. If you're watching the stream, let me know who you think won the draft. I'll get into it here in a minute once they complete the uh, once they complete the client draft, and we will get that started here in just a moment. And just one moment, we're having some technical difficulties with one of the team members. We'll get loaded up into the draft pick here soon through the client. Um, but yeah, if we're taking another look at these drafts, uh, I like what I'm seeing here. We'll kind of go over everything. We've got the Nocturne, who has huge gank potential. Um, but you've also got the Hecarim, who can also match that. He's really fast. He can go ahead and get his, uh, his fear off, but you've got a fear on the other one. There we go. Um... I'm wondering what the bot duo is, though. Right for the side of, for the side of red team, we've got <laughs> I never lose draft, homie. Bet okay. I hope to see you win then. Um, so here, here's here's what I'm excited to see. We've got a Senna pick, right? Um, but what is, what is the pair there? Are we going to have the Silas? Are we going to have the Poppy um, as the support? I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming Azir is going mid. I'm assuming the Nocturne is going jungle, though he could just as equally be going top. That would mean that the Poppy would be going jungle most likely, and that would put the Silas in support. So I, their draft leaves an element of surprise that, you know, um, I'm excited to see where everybody goes. On the other side, though, we've got a little bit more straightforward team. You've got the Gwen going top, the LeBlanc going mid. Hecram in the jungle and your Rakan Sivir bot lane duo. Um, I think the LeBlanc is a nice little challenge for the Azir. Um, a lot of mobility around the kit allows it very hard. Senna Azir bot lane. Okay, so we're getting reports that this is a Senna Azir bot lane. So that means we're going to see the Senna, I'm assuming the Famine Senna with the uh, Azir ADC. So that will be very interesting. If it's a if it's a Senna ADC with the support is here, what's going on? But either way, I'm excited to see it happen. Let's take a look real quickly. And we're still waiting technical difficulties. And so yeah, we got reports it is going to be a Senna Azir bot lane. I'm excited to see that. Then that means Silas going to the mid, Poppy likely going top, and Nocturne going to be jungle. Silas is a huge threat on this team, though. The Hecram alt, the Gwen alt, the Rakan alt, um, even the Sivir alt, all those can be dynamic changers. And the last thing you want to see if you're a Rakan is your own team get charmed by your ability. That's going to be hurting. Plus, you've also got the um, the Silas in the mid lane between his Abduct Abscon, his Kingmaker. That's a lot of trade potential. 
he can go in there, lock you down, and if he goes Everfrost first item, I've been seeing that a lot lately, where he'll go in, Everfrost, it secures the Abduct Abscond, he's able to trade out with his Kingmaker, and now you find yourself in a position where the trade that you might have been winning before, even with the Electrocute proc, is now going in his favor, because he's got all the Empowered Autos coming out afterwards. So Silas is a very real threat in this game. I'm excited to see the pick there. There we go. We're still just waiting on that to get cleared up. Um, Senna. I love the Senna pick. Infinite scaling. She's able to start dealing damage to turret. After, I think it's like 100, maybe 125. She can hit turrets without having to worry about the turret hit her. That's a scary thing. It's like an empowered uh, cannon minion with the Baron buff. Like, they're not at risk of getting hit by the turret, and they can just sit there and whack on that turret the entire time. That's a... That's a certain level of respect that has to be given to that champ. You've got to find a way to try and shut down, shut her down from getting those souls. And it looks like we are going to be remaking the lobby, so just bear with us here one more moment while we get everything loaded up. Um, while that gets sorted out, I'm going to just move this up here. Whoop. While this gets sorted out... And if somebody can send me an invite for the custom game, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, but while this gets sorted out, we'll continue to talk about the draft. The Poppy into the Gwen. I feel like that's going to be a that's going to be a great matchup for two reasons. One, the Gwen has great sustain, and she's able to cut through a lot of champions. Uh, I've seen her two v one, three v one very often. Um, especially after she gets her Rift Maker and she can sustain through that fight even more. The only problem is if Poppy gets to a certain level of tankiness, there's not much anybody can do. It's a Poppy. She's going to be full tank. And I think that's going to help in the team fight scenarios as well. You've got a little bit more of a front line on the side of Limitless Havoc than you do on the side of Lamrod Limp and Lions. So this draft is, is very fun. You've got a lot of potential for games to go back and forth. It looks like everybody's getting loaded in here, and we're going to be starting the client draft here in just a moment. But yeah, um, I like where we're at. Now, if I have to give a pick, and they're getting started with everything, I'm going to leave it here just so we can see everything. Um, if I have to give a pick to a team, I don't want to, you know, say anything too early, but I think there's a lot of potential for both teams. Um, it's just a win condition thing, right? So you've got the blue side here, which is looking a lot more, in my opinion, for a team fight. They want to have the Ekram come in, drop his ult. They want to have the Rakan come in, drop his ult with the Sivir. And then they want to have the LeBlanc blow somebody up in the back line while the Gwen is just completely putting damage out and maybe coming in for a flank. On the other side, though, You've got Hecram, I mean, you've got the Nocturne, who's going to have great gank potential. You've got the Silas, who's going to have great gank potential. You do have a Poppy, who's frontline, and you're going to have a Senna, who eventually is going to scale into a large level of DPS, and you'll have the Azir, who is also going to be uh, a lot of damage output. So I think it's more win conditions. You've got a little bit stronger, like I said, front-to-back team fight on the side of blue, but I think you have a lot more um, presence from the red team as well. So, Limitless Havoc on the side of red, Lamrod, Limp, and Lions on the side of blue. They are picking right now, and we will get into it. Okay, so that is going to be the Nocturne Jungle like we assumed. And I'm excited for the Azir Senna bot lane. That's, that's for me, going to be the determining factor, right? Because the Gwen Poppy match should be, all things said, relatively relatively equal. Uh, Gwen sustains well, can cut through people, Poppy's a tank. I, I think they're pretty much going to shake hands and, and farm it out. You've got Nocturne and Hecarim, who both have heavy gank potential. Um, I think whoever gets more farmed up in the jungle is going to be the one who's got the, uh, the potential to get more influence in the game. You've got Silas versus LeBlanc, both very mobile champions. I think Silas wins the trades, so as long as LeBlanc can farm it out, stay safe, um, I think that we're going to have more potential there. But the Azir Senna bot lane is really what's going to do it for me. I mean, S Sivir Rakan, that's solid. She's got the spell shield, you've got the charm, you've got knockups, you've got poke. You've got a lot of ways to win that fight, but um, with the Azir Senna, Azir's not your typical support nor is he your typical uh, 
DPS if they go Famine Senna. So I think there's a lot of different scenarios here where the Azir Senna um, is either going to become busted and roll over the game if they're able to lock down Sivir um, and get some good alts, push them back in, uh, get some ganks or some realms from the Nocturne and the Silas. There's a lot of potential there to win those skirmishes. But if you can't get the souls on Senna, if you're not able to get the Azir played right, if he's not able to get solid alts, if he's not able to scale up at the rate that you need him to, um, then I think they're going to find the bot lane is trailing behind a little bit, and they're going to need to rely on like the Nocturne and the Silas. So I'm excited to see how this game goes. Um, we do have a three-minute delay just for game integrity here. So while we get the delay going, um, in the chat, I know a couple of you already told me uh, who you think is going to win. We've got votes going out for Havoc. We've got votes going out for Limitless, uh, for, I'm sorry, for Limitless Havoc and for the Lamrod Lip and Lions. Um, but yeah, I, I want to know what you guys think. If you're not on the teams, caveat, uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you're not on one of the teams watching right now, let me know who you think won draft. And let me know what you think about the draft. The Senna, uh, the Senna Azir bot lane, that could be a huge, huge thing. Let's go Team Chip. Love it. And uh, while we're waiting here, this is supposed to be, a, uh, I believe, a either best of three or a three block. So please stay tuned for all three games. We're going to have uh, a hell of a series. These are plat gold level players, so they're very good at what they're doing. Um, and we'd love to have you stick around for the whole series. If you haven't done it yet, hit the follow button. I do content like this almost every night of the week. I also cast for a couple organizations like Hextech Championship. Um, and for uh, a couple of others. So if you'd like to see more of this, hit the follow button and uh, message me and I can get you more information on that kind of stuff. But we're going to get in the game here in just a moment. Stay tuned. All right, we are about ready to load up into the screen, see what summoner spells they picked, and get this show started. All right, so we do have the Glacial Augment coming out on the Senna. Teleport across, um, teleport across the side of Limitless Havoc for their solo laners. Um, no flash on the Gwen. I've been seeing that a lot. She's not really in threat of getting locked down too much with her W. We've got two Ignites there. Um, three Ignites if you include Rakan. So a lot of kill pressure coming from the side of uh, Lamrod Living Lions. Uh, I love the... <laughs> I love the ghost on the Hecarim. He just gets more busted with all that uh, um, movement speed. And yeah, we've got uh, we've got a match loading in here. I'm excited to see it. Let's see if any of these guys have any crazy mastery on anybody. Um, yeah, so Zier's not bad. Senna's not bad. Poppy's not bad. Hecarim's not bad. Rakan's not bad. 
the Sivir and the uh, and the Nocturne at least know what they're doing. So yeah, we're going to have a hell of a game here. Let's get everything popped up for you guys to enjoy the show. And uh, I'll leave this up from time to time. If anybody in the uh, in the chat wants to see it, just ask me to pop it up, and I'll be glad to do that for you. I'll take it down during team fights if I remember. But otherwise, this game is about ready to start as our two teams enter the rift. This is Limitless Havoc on red side, Lamrod Lip and Lions on the side of blue. First game in the series, and let's get everything checked out. Chilling Smite coming out on the Hecram. Challenging Smite coming out on the Nocturne. We've got a couple Corrupting Potions for Poppy and LeBlanc. Everything else, pretty standard setup. And it does look like it uh, it is going to be the Famine Senna as she goes with the Sickle. And we'll see how these teams spread out. Not quite a five point, but a very strong four point on the bottom side. And we could see a little early action here, which would be very fun. We've got the red team moving into the bot side, dropping deep vision. LeBlanc isn't quite going to be able to clear that out, but it looks like no more will come of it as Nocturne decides to drop back and swap out for the uh, sweeper, it looks like. You've got Hecram doing the same thing, at least with his deep vision, but he's going to rotate bot side. Minions have spawned. Or is he? He could be starting top side with Gwen. Both junglers to starting to sight, uh, start on their blue. And this match will get underway. Now, Sivir and Rakan have a huge opportunity here to try and cheese the bot lane. I don't know if anything's going to come of it, but there's a huge opportunity for them to try and stack up, but it looks like they're just going to get to lane early, knowing that uh, they have the opportunity to push for level two and get that started. Silas taking a little bit of early trade damage there, nothing too bad. And I am going to go ahead and swap these two out real quickly, just so that we're able to track that properly. And Gwen taking some early damage from the Poppy, almost down to half health. Poppy uh, finds herself with a lot of priority in the lane to go ahead and push that in and keep things crashing. And she took Corrupting Potions, so the Gwen finds herself... Uh, the Poppy took Corrupting Potions, so the Gwen finds herself uh, a little bit harder to sustain through that right now. Good job to the Blanc going ahead and doing a little bit more damage on that Silas, trying to keep the pressure on. And yeah, um, like I said, the bot lane is going to be really what we're looking at the most of the time here, I think, though. Is that Silas able to scale up? Is the Sin able to get souls? Are they able to lock down that mo very mobile Rakan with his with the W? Or are they able to... Good spell shield coming out from the Sivir there to get rid of that W. There goes the uh, Gwen trying to trade a little bit more on to the Poppy here. We've still got to fight Bruin in the mid lane. She keeps trying, look, she keeps trying to trade into that poppy, but nothing's coming of it. There's not a lot of damage coming through. Oh, here's Nocturne in the area. Could be coming in for a mid gank. LeBlanc gets tied down a little bit, but Hecram's coming into the bot side. The Ignite goes down onto the center. The Flash comes out. The W's going. He's trying to keep up with her, and he will get the first blood. And it looks like Poppy might get a solo kill here onto the Gwen. No, Gwen is just barely going to skirt away with her life. But that is a very good job from the side of Hecram getting that uh, kill onto the Senna. And Silas will barely walk away. Having been ignited, he has almost no health left available to him. And he will have to get a quick reset there. Um, teleport coming out from the Gwen as she runs back to the lane to try and keep up. But we've got a hell of a match so far. Gold in favor a little bit on the side of the Lamrod Limpin' Lions as Hecram was able to secure that first blood. Um, CS definitely in favor of Poppy in the top lane up about two waves or so at this point. We've got the LeBlanc up about a wave or so, 
And uh, all things considered, the bot lane's relatively equal, a little bit more in favor of Sivir. So um, I like where we're at so far. You've got definitely a little back and forth trading going on here. You don't have any fear from these Tim members so far. Red team was pushing up. They needed to respect that Hecarim gank. He came in. He was able to secure the kill. Uh, Nocturne also went mid. LeBlanc, very mobile, able to get out of it. And also traded it around so that the Silas was the one that had to end up leaving lane, even though he had jungler support. And now we've got a brawl breaking out in the top lane and that is going to be the Gwen that is able to lock down the kill onto the uh, Poppy. She used her Ignite there to finish everything up and she will find herself able to catch up in CS and with a little bit of a gold lead here. This oh here comes the teleport. The Gwen overstaying a little bit. She's going to have to run away and she will manage to get out of there. We've got another fight brewing down here in the bot lane. Some trading going on. And a very good job from the uh, blue side tracking where the Nocturne is likely at, as he's not spotted on vision, but they very much know that he's in that area. And Nocturne coming in. This could be a gank. He's going to get spotted on vision, but if he moves quick enough, it might not matter. He's coming in, and he backs off a little bit. They're going to take the respect and just uh, use that pressure. He is going to get spotted on vision there. clears it out, and um, we'll move out of that area. So yeah, good job of Nocturne making his presence known, helping drop off the pressure so that they're able to get a little bit more solid freeze in that area. Doing a quick check-in on a state of the map. We've got 15 plus CS over to the side of his ear. There comes the flash. There comes the abductive scon. A lot of damage coming down onto the LeBlanc, and the fear will lock it up. Now we've got Hecarim coming in for a counter. Watch out. This could be, oh! So, we have the Blanc get taken out there because of the great gank by the uh, Nocturne. He was able to land the fear and get the kill. Hecram comes in trying to secure a trade kill over, but he's not able to do it. The 2v1 puts him in a position that he will die and give over another kill to the side of Limitless Havoc. It's a 2-2 game, the gold favor inside of Limitless Havoc. At this point, they are doing a little bit better job with the CS and kills equal. That puts them up. If you're watching, let me know. Is this how you thought the game was going to go, or did you expect it to go a little bit differently? There's Poppy trading heavily onto the Gwen, though. This Gwen has been in this position before. She's taken a lot of damage. She's just trying to soak up the XP, look for her favorable trades. I don't imagine that we're going to see uh, Nocturne, or, Nocturne or Hecarim roaming up to the top side. Oh! She's going for the dive. She gets the kill. She's going to take a couple turret shots, but no fear from the Poppy, as she will lock down... Her first kill onto that Gwen and start pushing in this wave. Very good job from the Poppy there, knowing that she had the damage output, she had the health and survivability to do the tower dive. The Silas trying to stop this wave from crashing, but he's not going to be able to do it with the LeBlanc, giving him all the pressure in the world. Good job locking down those CS. Uh, everything in the mid, relatively equal. LeBlanc has a little bit more CS, but Silas has a kill and an assist, while LeBlanc just has a death. Still puts the Silas up a little bit, but I feel like we've got two junglers hovering around mid. We could see another brawl breaking out around the LeBlanc and the Silas. The Abductxon misses as she's able to dash away. And we've still got some poke coming out. The Spell Shield, very effective for this Sivir to watch out for those uh, lockups coming out of the Senna. There is the Electrocute proc on to him, but there is the Kingmaker trade back, and that's what I'm talking about with Silas. When he goes in, he lands his Abductive Scon, he's able to then trade out with the Kingmaker, and he finds himself in a position where he can just go in there and win a trade. We've got the Nocturne getting caught out trying to steal the dragon, but he is going to get pushed off that, blown up, and that will be a kill to the side of Hecarim, and the blue side will lock up the first Drake, an Infernal Drake. The next drake is going to be an ocean soul, so we are going to see a cloud or a mountain soul. Um, looks like we've got Azir and Silas both able to lock up two kills over in this fight by Drake. We've got the Senna and the Sivir trading it out. The Senna does find herself a little bit up further. She misses the W, tries to get the clear on the vision, but she will run away, and she hits her uh, support item, but nothing comes of it besides putting the pressure on the Sivir. The Rakan also able to get away to the mid lane. And that's a hell of a fight. That's a very good fight. Uh, we've got the Drake going over to the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions, but we've got the kills going over to the side of Limitless Havoc. 
and this poppy has just been pushed up the entire time. Very surprised we're not seeing Hecram play towards this top side with how aggressive the poppy's been, how far up she's been pressed. Um, once that ignites on, I, if I were Hecram, because I jungle a little bit from time to time, I would be running her up to that top lane and trying to abuse the position that she's in, especially since her teleport's down for another couple seconds. You've got plenty of pressure that you can put on there and abuse that top lane. We've got some uh, turret plates going over to the side of Limitless Havoc as they are just wailing on this turret. They're going to get one more plate, it looks like, and then say thank you. And they're going to keep the pressure on. We've got Red Team starting the Rift Herald now. A lot of stuff happening across the map. Good game so far. Thank you to both the teams for letting me A, stream this, and B, giving us such a good match. Nocturne is going to go ahead and lock this down. Misses the eye on the Herald there, which hurts a little bit. But he will go ahead and secure the Rift Herald. And it's on him now. We've got Silas roaming a little bit. Good job from LeBlanc to dodge the Abductive Scon. The stun comes out, the Electrocute lands, and that's a little bit of trade damage onto the uh, onto the Nocturne, but you've got three from the side of Limitless Havoc covering in the area. Poppy roamed down and Nocturne in the area. Hecarim finding himself a little outnumbered here, trying to figure out exactly what he can do. And the answer is not too much. He's just going to stand there and be a, a living ward. And now we see Hecram on the top side, damage coming out onto the poppy, a turret shot, and we've got the ignite going. Hecram's in the area, he could be coming up, the Gwyn ult comes out, he's going in for it, the Gwyn's taking a lot of damage, the poppy ult keeps him out of the show and he gets knocked over the wall. Gwyn is going to find herself in the middle of a wave, and she will get blown up by the nocturne ult, damage coming down from Hecram, the flash poppy, still trying to lock up the kill, but it's going to be turned on to him and that will be a double kill in favor of the nocturne. That is now seven kills to three in favor of Limitless Havoc, and they have about a 3,000 gold lead. Quite a bit of it on this Nocturne. Finds himself in the top lane, and um, very good counterplay. The Poppy alt knocking that Hecram out away from the uh, Gwen. Puts him over the side of the wall, over by his uh, tri-bush, which is unfortunate, because that means he's going to take that much longer to get back to the fight. And by then, Nocturne was already in our roam area and was able to lock up the kill. He ends up getting the double kill as Hecram tries to get in there and trade it onto the Poppy. And Rift Herald getting dropped here in the mid lane. A lot of damage coming down onto the turret. LeBlanc trying to fend them off. That turret is falling quickly. You've got a wave and you've got two members along with Rift. I'd expect to see this being the first turret gold going over to Limitless Havoc. Teleport comes down. You've got two members of the area, and it's going to be a 3v2 now. A lot of damage coming out, but Hecram is not able to lock up the kill, nor is he able to save the turret. First gold, uh, first turret gold going over to Limitless Havoc, and they now find themselves with a little under a 4,000 gold lead. And this Poppy, fearless. Just in case you're wondering, look at the look at the build here. We've got Gwen having to go the plated boots for survivability when normally she wants to go something more like cooldown or sort boots. So she's putting so much respect into that Poppy. The Poppy already with Divine Sunder still has the corrupting potion, working on her tier two boots or maybe into her second item. The Gwen barely has the le uh, leeching leer and she's working on a rift maker, but she is not exactly close. She also went. Um, with the dagger, which might have been to help CS there, because she's down about 30 CS, but um, we'll have to keep an eye on her build and how this all goes. And the Drake joining the field here right now, and we've got Red in position to go ahead and burst it down and try and steal this out as Hecram is in the uh, mid lane. And Silas able to catch the Duct of Scond onto Aramis there. The Dalt comes out from Nocturne. The Fear comes down. Nothing will come of it couple turret shots going to go over to the Silas. He is going to get away with just barely his life. He's ticking down from the Ignite. Ah, he will barely survive. And it will be the Azir who is able to get the kill onto the, um, onto the Sever and onto the Rakan. That four-man press afterwards, they're able to lock up the Drake and get two more kills in their favor. 
Limitless Havoc find themselves in a very dominant position. The teleport from Silas coming through now. There's the dash and there's the pop. No CC for the side of Gwen. She may manage to get out of here and have a TP wasted. Or rather not wasted. She might be able to they might be able to knock down this tier one turret on the top side. Meanwhile, Hecram getting that shut down from the nocturne, giving himself a nice little bounty that he can use right now. And good try from the Silas. That's the play that we're looking for. Watch out for the Silas. He's got Everfrost. It's a relatively low cooldown. He's going to be trying to land that, then hit his Abduct Abscon, land his Kingmaker, follow up with the Q, and his damage output is going to be intense at that point. He's already got two stacks on the Dark Seal, so watch out for this Silas. He is strong. He's got 2-0. and oh. He's got the same amount of CS as LeBlanc. He's in a favorable position to trade, uh, see some of these fights. Yes, absolutely, if you want to see the gold. Hey, wait, you're on the you're in the game, brother. So we've got gold in favor of Gwen, gold in favor of Nocturne, gold in favor of Silas, gold in favor of Azir, and gold in favor of Senna. The Limitless Havoc team is putting themselves in a very favorable position. There's the Gwen getting closer to her uh, her Rift Maker there, and that's all three Tier One turrets falling on the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions. Not the position you want to be in, and there could be a fight brewing in the top here. Nocturne able to get out some damage onto the Gwen. She gets away. Now we've got the Hecarim coming in. Rakan and uh, Poppy joining the fight. Rakan gets the knockup. So Senna's in the, um, Sivir's in the area now. Nocturne will get bumped out with his uh, paranoia dropping down, and it's still a 2v3 in favor of the, uh, oh, here we go, wait. This Poppy taking a lot of damage. The smite comes down. He's trying to survive, but he will get blown up by the Silas walking into the area. And uh, it looks like the blue team just either wasn't on the same page there or they were not in a uh, position to help out that Hecarim who just got caught out. That could be Rift Herald going over to the side of Limitless Havoc. Very close game so far. We've got... Uh, <laughs> 6,000 gold lead in favor of Limitless Havoc. They're up six kills. Drakes are tied, but they have a lot more pressure with three turrets on the map. That being said, a single team fight can change this dramatically. If they're able to have a Hecarim and a, uh, you know, we're just entering the team fight phase. We've had a couple skirmishes over uh, objectives so far, but this is truly being the laning phase kind of inning. So I'm excited to see how the team fights start to build up from here. Are we going to be able to see the Rakan drop his charm? The Hecram get his ult in and drop his fear. The LeBlanc managed to blow people up, dropping her Q, staying alive with her spell shield. There's a lot of team fight dynamic on the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions that they can execute on. They just need to find themselves in a position to do so. While we're looking at the side of Limitless Havoc, though, they are doing really well right now. The Zir Senna combo is working out. The Silas is just busted, and the Poppy has gotten far ahead. So they are doing everything they need to do. They're playing to their win conditions. The blue team has to come up with an answer. They've got to slow the game down a little bit. They're trading kills over too quickly. They're bleeding objectives on the map. They've got to find a way to slow it down. And here comes Rift Herald for the side of Limitless Havoc. So it's going to crash into the Tier 2 turret mid. And that will be the fourth turret of the game falling in favor of Limitless Havoc. We've got damage coming out onto the Sivir now. Fight over at base turret. And the Hecarim gets a good little flank in there. Are they able to do anything? No, the Azir ult comes down. Teleport coming in. It'll be LeBlanc that falls over to the Nocturne. Nocturne. Po uh, Poppy joins the fight now. We're going to find Rakan getting blown up. That's a 4 for 0 trade. And this could be... It's not going to be the end of the game, but it could damn well be close to it as they decide to let Poppy take a couple turret shots here and just press this base turret. It falls. They're going to leave up the inhib and drop over to the Mountain Soul. I mean, to the Mountain Drake. <laughs> We've got members saying it's probably over. LeBlanc will never become useful. Now, that hurts to say... LeBlanc can become very useful, though. If she's able to get onto the back line, she has the real potential to blow up the Azir, to blow up the uh, the Senna, to blow up even the Nocturne. There's a potential that she can output a lot of damage. She just needs to get the items, find the right fight. If they can get her into a flank position or have her join a late fight from splitting, it's impossible. And here's the red team stacking up in the tri-bush, rotating out. 
the Ductum Scon lands onto the Sivir. She has to flash away the ultimate stole from Hecarim, and that is going to be a kill going over to Silas, a solo kill, in fact. Now he's on the Rakan. Damage coming out, and he will fall to the Azir. We've got a 2 for 0 oh trade again in favor of Limitless Havoc. They find themselves up 11,000 gold, one Drake, six turrets, and they are going to go ahead and press mid here. This Senna, let's check it out real quickly just to get an update. She finds herself at 71 souls, not the place you want to have her. And we have this red team pressing on the inhib. Nocturne getting into a fight here with the Gwen. The Paranoia comes out. It lands. He's able to get the kill onto the Gwen. Falls. The Smite comes through, and Hecarim will get the trade kill out. But he finds himself in a position that he might get caught out by some of these red members here. And no, everybody's going to back and walk it out. Baron will be joining the map here in about 10 seconds. And we are going to see what happens from here on. And here comes the red team roaming out towards Baron, knowing that it's up on the field and that they have to uh, they have to put the pressure there. They can, they can obviously win the team fights. What blue team needs to do is they should have stacked up in the red team's area after they backed, tried to get somebody uh, blown up in rotation. They either need to drop down on the Silas, try and get that shut down gold onto somebody like the LeBlanc or like the Sivir. Um, but the red team is doing a very good job. They're setting up vision all throughout the uh, counter jungle. We've got pings coming on to the, the Baron. All members are in that area. We've got teleport available on the Silas, but he's already there, so that's not going to be an issue. Um, and this Baron's going to start to get melted down. Now, they don't have the greatest Baron taking potential, um, but they're doing it nonetheless. Here it comes. It's down to a quarter. Hecram's in the area. Is he going to try and get in there? No, he'll back off, and that will be Nocturne. Locking up. The Baron buff for the side of Limitless Havoc. And Limitless Havoc just taking the jungle as they want. They have all the pressure in the world. That mid inhib is gone all the way to the base. And they have tier 1 turret on the top. They have both tier 1 and tier on the bottom. They're going to focus on this top side tier 2 turret and go ahead and knock it down so that they can roam freely throughout any area of the jungle without having too much pressure from them. There won't be anywhere that the blue team can really drop back, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see them do some sort of pick. There comes the LeBlanc. She's going to try and get out of there, but that will be Nocturne locking up the kill. The Paranoia comes through. The Fear goes down onto the um, Sivir. She takes a lot of damage, but is able to get away with her life. Has to run back to the base. Meantime, Gwen getting blown up. Hecram joining the fray. He's getting chunked down. The trail is on him, and boom goes the dynamite. Hecram is out of there. you now got Hec uh, not, uh, Poppy going into the Rakan, dealing quite a bit of damage. They're doing some damage onto the base turrets. Meanwhile, there's pings coming out left and right that they want to start working on this inhib because they might not be able to end it here. We've got five seconds till LeBlanc is back up. All five members of the red team working on this top side inhib. And they're going to go ahead and back out here. Good use of the Baron as they're able to get the top side inhib. The bot side inhib is still gone. And uh, they could be putting pressure on the bot side now still. The Baron buff will be up for a little bit longer. If they decide to use it, they could abuse it. Um, no place in the jungle is safe. And look at the vision on the map. Look at the vision. You've got the red side dominating vision in that top side jungle ready for that Baron. They knew any play that was going to come through. They knew where everybody was. They knew they weren't at risk. They knew they didn't need to turn and fight. That's what you need to do. You need to have vision what you're, of, what, of what the enemy jungles or what the enemy team is doing. You need to catch them in rotation. Be aware of where everybody is. Now, we've got the Poppy getting caught out here. It's a 3v1, but even they have to respect the fact that that Poppy is huge and they cannot burst her down. They don't have the damage output yet. Blue team trying to get Gwen up in this top lane, maybe a little bit fed. She has her teleport up. She can join a fight if need be. Drake about ready to join the map here in 40 seconds. And we're going to see a hell of a last minute fight here. This could be a sole point for the side of Limitless Havoc as they find themselves up nine turrets, two drakes, a partridge in a pear tree, and about 14,000 gold. They're putting the pressure with this Baron buff down on the bot side, though. They want to get this last inhib before they drop back down to the Drake. And the uh, the base turret will fall. Nocturne ult comes out. The fear goes down. He's getting quite a bit of uh, damage coming down onto him, though. He wasn't able to get the kill. Nocturne could find himself in a losing position. He's going to get blown up, and that's a kill in favor of Sivir. Now we've got a fight coming out. 
There goes the Zgwen. There goes the Inhib. There goes the Azir. And he is able to land the ult into the Silas. And that is an ace. We are going to see Limitless Havoc wiping up the rest of this map. And that will be game one going in favor of Limitless Havoc. Whew. What a game. If you enjoyed that, stay here. We're going to have two more games just like it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Special thank you to Limitless Havoc and Lamrod Limpin' Lions. And if you haven't done it yet, hit the follow button for more content like this. Stay tuned. Hey, thank you very much for the ball, uh, for the follow, Jin Jazz and Rabbit Swamp Donkey. Appreciate that. Stay tuned for game two, guys. Well played. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are going to see these teams getting into the draft pick here shortly. Blue is going to be the side of Limitless Havoc this game. Red will be the Lamrod Limpin' Lions.
and it looks like the game will be getting underway, or the draft will be getting underway here shortly. All right. Limitless Havoc has the first band coming through. They are going to ban the Jacks out again. There must be some strong respect for the Jacks player on the enemy team. And there's the Azir. Lamrod, Lip, and Lion say we don't want to see any of that bullshit again. The Rakan ban is going to come through for the side of blue. Poppy coming through. Love the target bans from the last game. They're like, that comp was sick. Let's not do it again. And that will be a Gwyn ban coming for the last uh, ban from blue for the first half. And we'll see what the B uh, with the R3 ban is going to come looking like here. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw it towards another one of the laners there, like maybe the Silas or something like that. And it will be a Mordekaiser band coming through. All right, the B1 pick is on. We'll see what they decide to prioritize here in this uh, second game of the series. Viego. I like the Viego pick. He is uh, very strong right now. We could be seeing a Gragas come through. We are going to see the Gragas locked in. There's a member named Graggy Patty. I can't help but think that that's going to go to him, but we will find out. And uh, Hecarim being hovered again. All right, and there's the Darius pick. You don't see Darius played a lot in these kind of scrims. Um, he's normally like a solo Q champion, somebody that you play. Um, and Swain picked. Guys, this is a spicy as fuck game. Thank you very much for making it interesting for the viewers. Let's see what this last pick of the first half is going to be for the side of Lamrod Limp and Lions. And they're going to continue to roll with the Sivir. Don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm expecting to see Swain go into the support role. Um, Darius top, we might see the Viego in the jungle or flexed over to mid. I've seen him getting moved around a couple different times. Um, the Cinnaban coming through for the side of red. Limitless Havoc going to ban out the Lulu. Very strong ban. Lulu is a busted support right now. I'm glad to see her taken off the table, and I'm surprised she was not picked last game. Last band to come through for the side of Lamrod, Limp and Lylans, is going to be the Silas. They don't want to have any part of that. He dominated the last game, so that makes a lot of sense. And we're going to see the Thresh ban coming through for the side of Limitless Havoc. As we get into these final picks, I like the way these teams are looking. If you're in the chat and you're not on one of the teams, let me know what you think. If you are on one of the teams, you can still call yourselves out, though. I appreciate that, too. Yorick. I love the York top pick. That means we're probably going to be seeing Gragas uh, maybe support. Um, York really strong right now. The hole breaker on him and just let him split push. Mwah, chef's kiss. I love to see it. Blue team going with Tristana. She can push a wave like nobody's business. Her empowered ease allow her to take turrets, and she is a threat in the team fights with her hop reset. So, 
excuse me. I love that. Paired that with the uh, with the Swain, and I think you've got I think you've got some good potential for that bot lane duo. And it looks like we're going to be uh, taking it down to the wire here on the last blue pick. That's going to be a Kale. So if I'm not mistaken, we could be seeing the Darius. I don't know where everybody's going to go. They got some weird picks, and I love it. If I had to guess, though, I'm saying uh, Darius could be jungle. I know that they buffed that up a little bit here a while back, so we could be seeing him go to the jungle. Um, and there's the Maokai. Are they going to lock it in, or are they going to toy with us, tease us a little bit? There it is. All right, and we are going to get into the draft pick, uh, the client pick. While they're doing that, let's take it. There it is. I just realized you guys couldn't see any of that because I'm a troll, and that's why I'm an amateur streamer and not making millions of dollars. So this is the way the pick looks. Viego, Gragas, Hecram, Darius, Swain, Sivir. York, Tristana, Kale, and Maokai. Bands coming across as Jax, Rakan, Gwen, Lulu, Thresh. And Silas, Senna, Mordekaiser, Poppy, and Azir. Here we are getting into the picks again, just to be safe. Um, we're going to see the Darius going into the York top lane. I'm assuming it's going to be the Viego jungle, correct? So we'll have the Hecram and the Viego in the jungle, which means that we're going to see the Kale going into the Gragas. Yep. All right. I love it so far. I love what we're seeing. These two teams have had some spicy picks. They've had some great comps. Um, they're not do running down the same teams twice again, which is really nice to see. It's no fun when you watch three games that are the same game, same, game, the same bands, the same picks, um, and you just have people trying to do a little bit different setups. It's so much more fun when you see completely different picks. That's what a scrim's for, and that's why I like casting the scrims. And so the last band coming through here is going to be the Thresh. And we'll get these last two picks underway. There's the Sivir again. Definitely a comfort pick for Iramis. Tristana locks in. Swain locks in. And the... Oh, we're getting trolled with the Teemo hover. Wah, wah, wah. And there's the Maokai. Thank you very much, Rabbit Swamp Donkey. This is for practice, not to stomp. It's more fun to play some different comps and just see what you can make work. We have another about four minutes before the game will load in, and we're going to discuss the comp here. Um, if you haven't done it yet, hit the follow button, and let me know who you think won in the uh, draft. You've got Darius, Viego, Kale, Tristana, and Swain on the side of Limitless Havoc. You've got Yorick, Hecram, Gragas, Sivir, and Maokai for the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions. I think that we have a hell of a match here. Now... The first thing I want to say is York wins, right? Uh, you put him on Divine Sunder and Hullbreaker, and he is going to be doing a hell of a lot of damage. Um, he can end up 1v9ing if he gets a third or fourth item on there, and that will be a scary, scary sight. The Darius, though, um, I've not seen him played into uh, the Darius into the York, so I'm excited to see what that looks like. There is the potential that he can um, bleed out the York. They're both bruisers. Um, it'll just matter, you know, how that Darius plays it. If he's going to put the pressure on, if he's able to slow down the York, deny him some gold, deny him some experience, um, if he's able to get assistance from that Viego, then they can certainly put that York behind. Um, you've got Viego and Hecram. 
Um, I think that Hecram's gank potential, a little bit stronger, in my opinion, just because he can rush in there from a further distance and have more impact that way. But you've got Viego, who can literally steal a soul off of anybody on the enemy team. So you can have York fighting for you now. You can have Hecram, Gragas, Sivir, Maokai, any one of them, in a fight against you. And uh, if he steals the right soul, that can change the tide of a fight. Gragas and Nikhail... Um, Kale, early game, not super strong, so I expect to see that Gragas kind of went out early game, but Kale is a hyper carry. She is going to go from 0 to 60 in a couple seconds. So as soon as she hits level 6, she becomes a range champion. As soon as she hits level 11, she gets her empowered autos. As soon as she becomes level 16, now she's got the flaming empowered autos. And as soon as she hits level 18, they're just always on. You can't stop her. So look for that Kale to become aggressive late game and that could be the win condition um if there's no other you know if the rest of the team loses kale is going to be the late game win um so look out for that you've also got the sivir into the tristana i love it tristana meant to push her autos blow up waves her ease blow up waves her ease blow up turrets she can hop reset she can knock people out of a fight such a good ADC. She has a lot of autonomy, a lot of mobility in her kit, and she has a lot of pressure built in. But you've got the Sivir. She's got the Spell Shield. I think she wins the poke game, personally, with her Q and her uh, with her E. So there's a lot more potential um, for the Tristana to have to deal with there than meets the eye. I'm excited to see how that bot lane matchup goes. And then we get to the... The, the supports now i love swain's support his e is deadly it's like a little fucking pull um that he just lands on people and yanks you towards him drops his e dro uh, drops his q drops his w he can use his w as basically another mini ward across there oh no cussing i'm so sorry my bad my bad um and then you've got maokai maokai is in a position where he can definitely put the pressure onto um onto the bot wave through the Oh, so sorry, in our Lord's name. Um, where the Maokai can put pressure into those into those um, bushes and have a lot of bush control. Um, he can out he can poke the damage out by those bushes really well. He's got an alt that just locks everybody down, and it has such a long and wide distance that it covers that there's a lot of um, potential in team fights for that Maokai to shift how things are going. Especially if you've got a mobile champion like Hecram that can flank in and make some things happen and follow up, you could find yourself in the losing fight real quickly. As we get loaded in, we'll go ahead and kill the music and take a look at the summer spells and the runes that these champions have gone. Teleport on all the laners except for Gragas, who will go with the Ignite for a little kill pressure. We've got the Hecarim with the Ghost again. Heal on both our ADCs and Ignite on both of our supports. Um, we do see that Swain is going Electrocute. Love that build on him. Hail of Blades for Tristana. Fleet work. Uh, fleet, ugh, fleet footwork on the Kale instead of PTA. Um, that's kind of interesting, a little bit more sustained built, especially with the secondary runes. Everything else looks pretty solid on their team. You've got the uh, the Grasp on the York. I love it. Dark Harvest on the Sivir, of course. Uh, Maokai going with the Aftershock. And Gragas going with the Electrocute. So this is going to be a damage output Gragas. This is not going to be a tanky frontline kind of Gragas. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't. Uh, sometimes I get excited. I apologize. I appreciate the call out, though, and I will try and keep it a bit more professional. Thank you. Um, but I like the way the teams are set up so far. I like what I'm seeing. Um, my, like I said, my only concern is going to be that Kale gets really strong late game. That York gets really strong late game. So again, we're going to see which one of the lanes plays it out right as we get into the game, and the summoners are hopping on to the rift let's take a look at their buys we've got corrupting potion coming out for yorick and for the gragas for a little bit of sustain in lane we've got challenging spike coming down on both our junglers a has and it looks like darius dc'd we are going to have a quick pause here as the game is getting sorted out and that was fast welcome back to the game darius um now, as we're looking at everything in the the match, like I said, you've got a York who's going to be very strong, and it looks like they are going to swap those around, like they said. So that will be a Kale going into the York and a Darius going into the Gragas. Um, 
I'm excited to see how this plays out. I think that the swap makes the game a little bit more interesting for sure, because now you've got now you've got Kale going into York, so it's going to really depend. That's going to put a lot more pressure on those laners to to win lane, to get their items built up, to not be denied golden experience, to be there all the time, and to try and get what they need to. If Kale's not able to do that, she doesn't come online until later. She's fought back from getting her Nash's tooth. And we have another DC coming through. The game will pause. Um, bear with us. Somebody probably has, you know, Cox Internet or something like that. Bum, bum, bum. Both teams, though, kind of scrawling out across the board. Pretty safe layout so far. It looks like Viego might be going for a, uh, or Viego already went for his deep ward there. Uh, didn't quite get cleared out by the Hecram. And, um, yeah, we're just kind of waiting for the pause to resume here. Bear with us. No. There we go. And bear with us just one moment while we wait for the pause. We'll get back into it in just a moment. And there it is. That was quick. As soon as I got everything set up for it, he joins back. Appreciate it. We're going to have a little freeze here while we wait for the game to respond to the pause. So just bear with us a moment. Wait for it. Right, Games likes to make their stuff a little bit finicky there. And so here we go. Looks like the Viego is going to start on his blue. The uh, Hecarim is going to start on his red this time. Reverse that. The Viego is going to start on his red and the Hecram is going to start on his blue this time. It's almost like the buffs are always in the same spot every game, guys. And here we go. We've got the Gragas and the Darius matchup already underway. We've got the uh, Jungles both getting a nice little leash from their bot lane as they both match up to lane. And we find the Kale and the York being very respectful in the top lane. Neither one CS in so far. We've got one more pause coming through. And just bear with us one more moment. I love you too, guys. Take your time. Get it sorted out. to it there will be a little delay here in the game since there was a pause so bear with us when that occurs but in the meantime things are underway top laners all even mid laners relatively even server with a slight lead 
And that Hecram looks like he is about a camp ahead of the Viego, as the Viego did not clear out his um, his chickens or his krugs. He just went straight to the wolves and is going to double start the uh, blue buff in the gromp, it looks like. Thank you. I I'm working on getting those kind of things. I'm not the best video editor, but I'm working on it. I appreciate the call out, Rabbit Swamp Donkey. I'm having a hard time saying your name every time I want to say it in a different way. Uh-oh, uh, Darius finding himself in a bit of a position. Tries to get the stun onto the Hecarim and flash away, but it will not work. He is going to fall to Gragas, and Gragas will lock up the first kill of the game, getting the first blood, going over to Lamrod, Limpin' Lions. And now we've got Viego in the area. He's coming in for a gank on the York. York taking a lot of damage, tries to get away with the... Uh, Oh, there's the powered movement speed from the Kale. And it's moments like that that I wish Kale would have gone PTA. She would have procked her PTA, and that extra output damage that would have been there might have been the difference between Yorick living and Yorick falling there. But Fleet Footwork is great for sustain. She's going to find herself in a position where she's able to get a little bit of gold up here. Um, Yorick not using his TP here, it looks like. He's going to run back to lane. Um... And Kale doing a good job of just kind of last hitting here, trying to freeze it up in her favor. We've got the blue lane chilling down bot. And that's the Maokai control of a bush, right? He can just drop those in there, pop that Swain out of there, and now they know exactly where he's at. But, ooh, that did a hell of a lot of damage to the Sivir. All right, we see Viego in the area of the red team pushing up. That Sivir is just letting her Q rampage through the team. All right, we've got Darius getting repeat ganked again. He is going to likely fall here. That'll be Gragas getting two kills onto the Darius. No fun for him. Meanwhile, Maokai having to flash out. The Ignite comes down, and that will be Tristana getting a kill onto the Maokai. Very good gank coming from the Viego in that area. The Soul will not be picked up, and he will just get back to farming. Tristana is relatively low here, while the Sivir finds herself with a bit more health. You could see a... Uh, Sivir is going to hang out here. She's not terribly afraid of them. She gets the spell shield to block the pull from the, uh, oh no, to block the pull from the Swain. But now we've got Kale and, oh no, so much is going on here. Greg is roaming down the Hecram in the area, and that's going to be Viego getting blown up. The side of Lamrod Limpin' Lions is playing very well this game. They've done a nice job of playing around their Hecram. Hecram felt like he didn't quite have the same impact last game, but now we see that they're going to get the kill onto the Tristana. They're going to lock up the damage onto the Swain, and that's going to be a lot of kills going over to the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lion. Swain is able to trade a kill back onto the Maokai, but it will be the Gragas and the Hecram who see the biggest gold difference here. There goes the flash from Kale as she tries to get out of the barrier from... York and he throws a couple of his ghouls on her but nothing more will come of it she's very low she might have to back and tp back to lane um she does find herself with a little bit of a cs lead so she can afford the couple seconds back as long as the york doesn't go too ham here dragon is already on the map been ignored for the last minute or so i'd not be surprised if we saw hecram start moving over to that since he has definite um cryo after he backs You've got the Viego with just two long swords and a dagger building into that Noon Quiver, I assume. But the Hecram is very likely going to be able to come back with a solid component. So we'll have to see how this all shakes out. York, meanwhile, backing, doesn't know that he could get pinched at any second if they were a little bit more aggressive there. But they're going to go ahead and just get out of there. And Viego will get back to the farming game. The gold is in favor of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions, about 1.5 thousand gold. That is thanks to First Blood and their uh, couple extra kills that they have right now. And it looks like uh, Rabid Swamp Donkey saying that if he wanted to do a stomp, and they just would have banned out the one-trick Gragas, but they let it go through because they want a little bit of a challenge. And I have to admit it, I like it. Um, the Gragas is doing very well right now. CS relatively equal in the mid lane, but he is up three kills and two assists because he has had the roam. He sees the Viego, and he's not even very scared. He's not dropping off. 
He's uh, he's just... Uh, oh, there's the alt. Drops down the kill and gets the electrocute proc onto the Darius. That was a really good play from the Gragas. No fear of the Viego being in the area. Knew he had the kill locked up. Here comes the York. He drops down his ghouls onto the Kale. So it's locked up with the barrier. And now we've got the Kale just trying to get out of there. She drops her alt to stay alive. The slow comes through. She might be able to get out of this. The ghoul barely misses. She's trading a little bit of damage onto him, but nothing more will come of it. Hecram in the area could decide to do a deep dive here and get that Kale locked up. We'll have to see. All right, it looks like the Hecram decided to just get some deep vision. Go ahead and back out of there. There's the Swain getting the Electrocute proc onto the Maokai. Um, Sivir deciding to chase in heavy there. And I like this. Relative to the last game, things are pretty equal across the map in terms of CS. Now, obviously, you've got the Gragas, who's up four kills at this point. He very clearly has a mastery understanding of the champion. Um, same thing could happen, though. Yes, 1,002. This is very... Uh, we, we could see... Uh, I actually don't know what you're referencing. The same thing could happen. You're saying that they could get stomped again or that the one trick could come out. Let me know. And the Kale... Range champion, finally stronger than a caster minion, and she's going to come online and start doing things. The pull comes through for Swain. The Electrocute is going to land. Tristana gets the hop, but the Maokai is able to dash over. The E lands, and it will be a kill going over to Tristana. The Sivir getting chased down. And meanwhile, this Kale having to make some serious contestations with the York because he's able to land several of the ghouls and the... Oh, there goes Gragas and the Hecram, both trying to get the gank on the blue uh, bot lane. Viego will fall, but it might be just enough time for the Tristana. She lands her heel. A lot of damage coming out. The fear comes in, and she gets blown up by the Gragas. Gragas is now 5-0. and oh. There comes the smite. It's one extra, ooh, one extra turret shot onto the uh, Hecram, and he would have fallen there. Gragas is able to lock up six kills, three assists, and he is roaming like it is his job. He is not even caring about the CS at this point. Meanwhile, Darius trying to roam down. Uh, meanwhile, the Gragas is trying. Uh, the Darius is starting to roam down, trying to catch some people off while they're low. But I don't know that anything's going to come of it. We see it in backs. He's outnumbered though. He finds himself in a four v one in a fight he might not want. There's the flash. There's the pull. There comes the E from the... Oh, we got some damage coming down, and is it could be the Hecram? No, they're not able to get the kill on the Hecram. He's able to get out of there. Gragas now finds himself in a 1v3. He uses his... Oh, he almost gets the kill onto the Viego, but the Viego is able to flash away at the last second and not take that extra damage. He will get the shutdown, and that is going to be a hell of a fight in the bot lane. I love to see that back and forth kind of trading out. We've got the York just continuing to press in on this Kale. Now she is able to match and get some extra gold. She's also getting the extra gold from the uh, from the um, ghouls. So she could find herself in a very good position. Yeah, there are a couple plat level players in this game as well. It's gold to diamond in this game. All right, Gragas just charging back in, knowing he's got the Hecram there. Is a not that he needs it, but a safety net, and so he's just going to play up and play aggressive. I would expect to see this Gragas continue to be very dominant in the game. Um, York and Kale again, just kind of shaking it out, but this demolish is going to hurt, and he's gotten all four plates on the top turret already. Not the place you want to find yourself if you're the Kale. Oh, there's the alt. Gragas doing a very good job of playing around the uh, playing around the alt. He's able to get the blast over and knock the land the knock up, and he's able to follow up with an auto land doing the electrocute and secures the kill. There's the slow from the Swain. Look for the pull. Nope, didn't happen, and uh, they're both going to just kind of walk away. Meanwhile, Viego trying to keep the Gragas in the area. They have to be respectful on the side of Limitless Havoc of this Gragas and back off again because he could have roamed. 
Um, you've got the Hecarim working on the Rift Herald right now. But the side of Lamrod, Limpin' Lions is up about 3,000 gold at this point, just a little bit under that number. Um, but Limitless Havoc have one Drake on their favor. And it looks like, yes, it was Hecarim who was able to pick up the Rift Herald there. So that is going to be uh, a lot of pressure coming out from the side of Lamrod, Limpin' Lions. All right, and uh, the Sivir finds herself up a little bit of gold, a little bit of CS. Let's take a look at the gold right now. Um, just kidding, I forgot about the two kills on the Tristana. Oh, no, there's the Darius. He's rotated topside now, and Kale's gone mid. He gets blown up by the Hecram and the Yorick. Very unfortunate. This Hecram uh, is really having a lot more presence on this map than he did the last game they're going to drop the rift herald take the tier one turret anyways and they're going to have to escort this thing up to get a second charge off somebody's going to have to try and rotate over to that as the uh darius is still down for eight seconds kale finds herself locked up against the gragas viego is going for the counter invade bot side pressing up on their end and they're going to lose this tier two turret very likely here darius running over to the top running over to the tier two turret Kale trying to match. She might get picked off by the Hecram. And that is all of Topside gone in a single charge. Darius finds himself a little bit behind here, but I like that they tried to rotate him over to the top side and put Kale against the Gragas. Um, it could be a little bit better matchup considering she is ranged, he is melee. But he's done a very good job of playing around his kit so far. And so we'll have to see how this gets played out. <laughs> and we've got a battle brew and there comes the slow for oh here comes the alt from the swain the lock the lockup comes through and the heel comes out swain's able to stay alive the viego takes some turret shots a lot of damage coming out onto the sever she's made able to flash away there but the pole did land you've got gragas now roaming tristana taking a little bit of a greedy back knowing that that could be what's going on the stun lands on the gragas nothing more will come of it tristana is able to get her back off but it is a two ooh two v four and gragas alt pushes the <laughs> pushes the swain away and he's able to lock up that kill that hurts to see the gragas very clearly um, in a dominating position here has 7,100 gold right now. He is outpacing the next closest person, almost 2000 gold on the enemy team, which is Viego. We see that the, uh, the blue team is just behind here in all accounts. It's not a fun thing to say or see, but that's what the reality of the situation is. There are win conditions for them though, as we're starting to get in more of the team fight phase and we could see that this could go their way after we get into the team fight. We've got York matching the split push from the, uh, or rather not rather the split push, but matching the push from the Darius on the top side, Viego hovering in the area. Very good job of red side keeping vision. I'd love to get a look at the vision numbers after the game. I'd love to get a look at the vision after the game. I'll check that out and I'll let you guys see because I think that Red Team has a much higher control. Oh, there's the Electrocute landing onto the Kale. Kale finds herself having to try and CS, but oh, there's three members here. It could be a collapse. It's going to be a collapse on the Viego. The Darius pulls him in. Not the thing you want to do with this team. The alt comes down from the Kale, tries to drop it down. Now we've got a 5v3 breaking out. It is going to be the Darius that gets blown up. Now the Hecarim gets traded out. It's a one for one kill. It's gone over to the Swain. It's a two for two. They're trading back and forth. Blue team is doing a great job of trying to answer this red team. He's going to flash. He's going to get the stun. There's going to be some damage coming out on the server. That will be a triple kill over to the Tristana, exactly where you want the gold. Gragas has a real chance to try and steal this, though. They're going to work the dragon and see if anything comes of it. He's in the area. Meanwhile, York is just taking inhibs at the top of the map against the Kale. This is a crazy game. We've got fights breaking out left and right, kills being traded, and the York just pressing for non-stop damage in the top lane. He is going to lock down the inhib. That is an inhib at just 16 minutes into this game in favor of the York. He does get killed, and that goes on Darius, which is going to help him feel a little bit better now. There is the Viego to match the Gragas in the mid lane. Some damage coming out, but just going to try and clear this wave. Nobody wants to really pick a fight with the Gragas. 
York's warning, uh, York warning for sure. He is on. Let's take a look. He's on his Divine Sunder. He's got his boots. He's building into his next item. He's got the Corrupting Potion for Sustain. He's got Teleport and Flash Up. He is a threat. Even with no kills, he is a... Look at him. He took the entire top lane all the way to Inhib. You've got to respect the York. He's rotating bot side now, and he says, I'll do the same thing on the bot side. Meanwhile, blue team hovering in the in the bush trying to get a pick on this. The Sivir knowing that something doesn't feel right. And good call on the Sivir not to go up in there and saving herself a gray screen. Uh, you've got the Gragas. Very aggressive, very strong, very big. He's already setting on two full items, tier two boots, and a ten stack dark seal. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that go into a Magi Soul Stealer. There comes the... Uh, there comes the alt from the Gragas. It did not land, though, so nothing will come of it. That is his classic combo. Ults the enemy champion into himself, gets the knockup onto them, and then lands his Q auto for the electrocute and the kill. There's Hecarim putting some damage onto the Swain. He finds himself getting caught out. Swain trying to use his ult. He won't be able to do it. Sivir will get the kill onto the Swain. Now we've got four members of the red team here. Just three members of the blue team. The Tristana able to get away. Everybody else trying to hunt down the Kale and the Viego. Yorick matching over to the mid. And we've got a very well played, well communicated game. There's the Kale. Alt comes through. She gets stuck inside the, uh, stuck inside the barrier from Yorick. And that will be the tier one turret falling in the mid lane. I have to agree with Rabid Swamp Donkey. I don't think it was a great idea to take the turret that early. He's just going to funnel gold and experience into that top lane. And that's what Darius needs right now to get back into it. He's not on a mythic item. Those empowered super min uh, not the empowered super minions, those super minions are going to give him additional gold, additional experience that he needs to start clawing back into this game. He's level 11. Everybody else is level 12 as far as the laners go. So that's really what he needs, and it's what he's doing. He's just going to set in the top lane and farm it up for a little bit. Meanwhile, Rift Herald did go over to Hecram again, and ooh, you hate to see it. Gragas is able to get the solo kill onto the Tristana, and he didn't even have to use his ult there. He just blew her up all around. Darius doesn't have a real presence right now because he went up against Gragas, and Gragas has been so strong this game, there's not much that he could do. It's a very well-played Gragas game. It looks like it's a Gragas one-trick if, uh, if we're reading this right. His name is Graggy Patty, after all. Um, but yeah, the Darius has had no presence because he's been shut down the whole time by this Gragas. Even when he tried to rotate to the top side, it was already Yorick having gotten four turret plates and found himself in a dominant position there, too. Now we've got the Rift Herod coming down mid. The Tier 2 turret will fall for the mid lane. Looks like they might be able to clean up this uh, Rift Herald before he gets into the base turret for mid. They, they do so. And we could see another fight breaking out here in the bot side jungle. Red is trying to stay. Ooh. Hmm. And, uh, oh, here's the Kale. Taking some damage, has to use her ult. Viego and Kale stuck underneath this turret. Kale gets blown up. Viego trying to stay alive, but five members of a, people under a turret will not help any time that happens, and he will get blown up. He is able to trade out the kill onto the Viego, so good job getting some of that um, some of that pressure relieved from not having the Yorick there. He does have the Hallbreaker now, so I expect... Ooh, the Gragas is continuing to abuse his alt combo and kills the Swain. This is a 21-minute game. They're already up almost 8,000 gold, 10 kills. They don't have any other objectives really besides the uh, the Rift Heralds, but that's all they need. They're going to get this inhib as well. That's two inhibs, but now they find themselves in a position where you really do put yourself um, with Kale and Darius being able to soak up some of that XP. But I'm excited to see what happens here. We've got a lot of pressure coming out of the side of Lam uh, Lamrod Limp Lions. They've got 
their first Drake of the game, they could stack four Mountain Soul, which would not feel good in the team fights. They've got a lot of pressure on the top and the bot side. Inhib's already back up on the top side, though. But you've got a lot of gold and a lot of experience funneling in, and this Kale and this Darius can soak that up, and they can start to abuse it. Um, I understand what you're saying, that your team needs a challenge, though, and sometimes it helps to. That's that's why I love going into a flex game and getting put up against people in a higher rank than me, because that's how you get better. You don't get better if you lift the same level weights every day. You've got to start getting heavier. you got to get stronger. So I like where your head's at, Rapid Swamp Donkey. Um, let's see how this Darius does into the York. With this fight going on up here, it looks like it won't happen. The vision control from the red team is very strong right now. They've got vision in the enemy jungle. They can track where people are. The York can give the right amount of respect, knowing that there's three people coming up at him. He gets caught out by the Darius. Some damage coming out. The York trying to drop down the... Uh the barrier but it will be Darius is able to hit the kill onto the Yorick a lot of damage coming out of that Tristana she could be online now with her two items and it looks like we could see a fight happening over Dua, over Baron but there's the alt coming out from Gragas he's able to get the electrocute kill onto the Viego flash coming out from Swain he still gets caught out by the Malkai alt and he will fall that is now a three for one trade in favor of the Lamrod Limpin Lions Game one was a lot different story, Trodzy, so uh, I don't know if you've been here for the whole series, but Rapid Swamp Donkey brings up a good point. Ego or confidence, we'll have to see. Game three will tell us what really happens here since, uh, since we'll have to see how the third game of the series goes. Rapid Swamp Donkey has skin in the game. Uh, he is... Uh, either on or coaching the uh, Limitless Havoc team. So he's got a little bit more skin in the game. I expect a little bit more heightened emotion out of him. But um, yeah, we find ourselves with a, with a hell of a game right now. 22 kills to 10 in favor of the Lamrod Limit Lions. They have almost a 10,000 gold lead. They are up seven turrets. They've started to get Drakes on the map. Viego trying to get his jungle while he can, um, knowing that there's no pressure right now. That's about all he can do. They are, uh, they are, you know, the side of Limitless Havoc is behind the eight ball, but they do have a very strong Gragas. They do have a very strong Hecarim in the game right now. Almost missed with the pull onto the Gragas. Wouldn't have mattered much as he's behind a wall, but it still hurts not to have it land. And we've got Baron Empowered Minions charging down mid you've got super minions coming into the bot you've got a york with empowered minions coming into the top this could be the end folks the york is getting quite blown up here though and the tristan is able to lock down the kill that's a one kill favor in uh one kill trade in favor of limitless havoc as there are now four members of the uh, lamrod limit lions team here in the mid the drag assault comes out the gragas could get blown up here and he will fall to the side of uh he will get the darius bleh. Gragas will get the Darius kill. And we see blue team answering back, getting four kills over to their side. Very well played. And that is going to be the Hecarim running around for his life, getting chased by the Viego and the Swain. He's going to try and back. He's got the empowered back, and he will get it off and get out of there. So one of the team members still has Baron. In the chat, let's not fight, boys. Let's not fight. Enjoy the games and just root for your team so we don't need to have anybody argue. Um, that was a really good play from Limitless Havoc. They were able to turn that around and give themselves a four-for-one trade in their favor. That KL level 16, she is almost fully operational. 
Um, excited to see her start popping off. She's got the Riftmaker. She's got the Herald. She's working on the Void Staff. She's got the Berserker Grief. So she is going for that full out damage again. I would have loved to have seen her with the PTA on there. I think that would have made a lot of difference in the laning phase as well as some of these team fights. But the fleet footwork was for sustain, so you got to respect that a lot. And that's Red Team getting their second Mountain Soul, the uh, second Mountain Drake of the game. That is going to be tied up. Two Drakes to two Drakes. They are in a 6,000 gold lead as that little fight was able to catch up some of the gold in favor of Limitless Havoc. They're rotating over to... Uh, there's no objectives up for a little bit. Baron won't be on the map for another 2 minutes 20 seconds. Um, Drake isn't going to be spawning for another 4.5 minutes. So the only thing we can really see is uh, set up for a pick and maybe a kill on uh, favor of the... Lamrod Limp and Lions is they are going to go ahead and put some members in the jungle here and try and watch for a blow up. The Gragas now has his uh, has his death cap, has his oblivion orb as well. He's lost a couple stacks on his. Uh, on his dark seal, but it doesn't seem to be too much of an issue so far. We've got Executioner's Calling coming out from the Hecarim, definitely respecting the heal potential of the other team. I'm interested to see that we don't see a lot of the uh, heal cut coming out from the Limitless Havoc team. And we have a fight breaking out. The, uh, the York doing quite a bit of damage to that Tristana. The Kale Alt comes out. The Gragas is going to manage to blow her up, though, and that will be the kill for Gragas going on to the Viego. And Yorick will die. Darius will die. It's a two-for-one favor uh, trade in favor of the Lamrod Limpin' Lions. They find themselves with four members on the map and Baron spawning here in 50 seconds. They could easily probably melt this down. They're going to steal a little jungle and maybe rotate back. Three members from the side of Limitless Havoc find themselves trying to keep their base alive and just stop it from pressing in. They might try and set up for a pick here knowing that they have the dra uh, Baron pressure, but it looks like the red team is going to say, no, if you want Baron, screw it, take it. We just want to try and get some extra gold here. And this game is turning into quite the game. The way it started with that Gragas dominating and the Hecarim having a lot of presence on the map, I assumed that this game was going to be over closer to the 20-minute mark, especially when we saw the Inhib fall at just 16 minutes. Um, but now we find ourselves in a 30-minute game. There's about a 6,000 gold CS difference, which is smaller than it has been at some points in the game. So Limitless Havoc is playing to their win condition. They are starting to stop the bleeding. They're starting to slow the pace down and do what they need to do to win, i.e. the Kale's coming online, the Tristana is coming online. You're starting to get more bruiserness out of the Darius. The um, this this could be a fun team. You know, this could be a fun game to see as it grows and goes on. And we have the blue team playing a little bit more aggressively in the enemy side jungle. They might put themselves in a position where they want to start a Baron here. This would be quite the, quite the play. York on the bot side split pushing. Gragas mid. Pushing there a little bit. Baron is getting melted down. However, there's the Hecarim. There's the teleport. There's the fight. M Maokai is able to lock up the Baron. That's a kill in favor of the uh, side of Limitless Havoc. But it looks like the Gragas is able to trade a couple more kills over. And that's going to be an ace for Lamrod Limpin Lions. They were able to get the Baron. They were able to get the Ace. The blue team tried to rush that Baron down, but the Gragas was able to get in there. The Hecarim was able to land his ult, and he was able to get the kills. That is very likely going to be the end of the game, unless it takes them 20 seconds to press in here, but I doubt it. There's one base turret. There's two base turrets, and the Nexus will fall. That's going to be game two in favor of Lamrod Limpin' Lions. The series is now tied one to one. Stay tuned for game three, and if you haven't done it yet, hit the follow button for more of this.
and we will get the final draft underway right now. If you're just tuning in, the series is currently one to one. Lamrod, Limp and Lam, uh, Lamrod, Limp and Lions. That's a mouth twister if uh, I've ever heard one. Is currently tied with Limitless Havoc, one to one in the series. Limitless Havoc took the first game with some great picks. They had the uh, the Nocturne, the Senna, the Azir, Poppy, and Silas into the LeBlanc, Siver, Rakan, Gwen, and Hecram. Game two went over to the side. Of Lamrod, Limp and Lions with their Gragas, Hex, Sever, Yorick, Maokai picks into Viego, Darius, Swain, Tristana, and Kale. But now we have game three going underway right now. And they're going to continue to ban out the Jacks. Love to see it. You've got Azir bans coming through. A lot of respect for that first game. They just don't want to repeat. Goodbye, Gragas. None of that again. I am handsome, thank you. That's very polite of you. And uh, the second red band coming through is going to be... Bum, 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 taken down to the wire. They could be thinking it out. What's it going to be? It's going to be the Poppy. Poppy was played in the first game, so a lot of respect again given to some of those target picks. Um, and there's the Hecram. They want to see what this team can do when they're not on their quote-unquote one tricks. So I'm excited to see this. You think he's more handsome than me? Oh, Moen. That hurts my soul. All right. B1 pick going to go over to Nocturne. Nocturne, again, really strong. He was a very dominant presence in the first game that we saw in the series. Um, he was played jungle. He can be flexed other places, so I'm excited to see it. Easy. Easy with the racist thing. Uh, Rakan getting picked, putting a lot of priority on the Rakan here. They must think it's a good champ to steal away from the side of blue. Thank you, 1002. Keep it straight for me while I'm calling this. Um, Siver is going to get locked in. That's the third game we'll see Siver picked. Leona, I love the Leona pick. And Samira locked in. That is a deadly duo if I ever saw one. We'll see what the final pick for this first half of the phase is. Red team is going to hover Gwen, and they're going to lock her in and say thank you for the pick. So we've got the last two bands coming out, starting with Red. I'm not rooting for either team. I'm just here to cast it and make it fun, so... Silas band coming through. Very wise choice from the red team as Silas was dominant in the first game. One thing I love about pick bands is the first game had certain pick bands and then as the games have gone on it's evolved into its own pick band for the, the meta of this particular series. And I always think that's kind of interesting just to see. We see the rumble going to get banned out as well. Red team taking it down to the wire. They're going to get the Urgot out of there. He was banned a couple times earlier in the series, so we will not get to see him. And the final ban going to come through for the side of Limitless Havoc will be the Diana. Let's see what the R4 pick looks like as we get into the second half of the pick series. <laughs> I'm glad to see you say you're not racist. That makes me feel better. Thank you. Tristana going to go ahead and get picked over to the side of Lamrod, Limp, and Lions. Tristana was able to come online there late game last game, but it wasn't enough to make a difference for the favor of Limitless Havoc. So we will see if Tristana is able to do a bit more on this team. Heimerdinger, I love it. And 
And the final pick for the blue side, the side of Limitless Havoc, is going to be... Drum roll, please. It's going to be a Pantheon. And Amumu will get locked in very quickly as the answer to the Nocturne. All right, so let's take a look at the state of the... Uh... <laughs> let's get a look at the state of the map here so far, or the state of the game so far. We've got a Nocturne pick. I love the amount of pressure that Nocturne can deliver onto a team. His R makes it huge for his roam potential. The Leona Samira bot lane duo, crazy engage. You've got the E, the stun coming out, the R from Leona. She can peel, she can engage, she can do whatever needs to happen for that Samira. But you're going to want to play that aggressively because Samira stacks her combos, drops her ult. It'll get weird in the team fights and especially in lane. You've got the Heimerdinger. Assume that's going mid. Pantheon likely going top, but I'd love to be wrong there and see something crazy. Um, but I'm very excited to see how that plays out. Again, this is a completely different team than what we've seen from Havoc in the other games, so I want to see these kind of matches. On the other side, we've got Rakan, Sivir, Gwyn, Tristana, and Amumu. I'm assuming that we're going to see the Gwen go top, the Tristana go mid, the Sivir and Rakan bot in the Amumu jungle. Again, trying to match a tank up to that Nocturne so that he can kind of answer that. The CC engage coming from the Amumu there. You've got some peel and some engage from the Rakan, so we really do have a, a game that could come out to being a, uh, a hell of a banger for the third game series. We've got Tristana into Heimerdinger, which is what I'm assuming is going to happen right now. Um, I think that will be a very fun match to see. Yeah, they're still picking that out. So we've got the Tristana into the Heimerdinger. I think... Both of them have a lot. I don't know who's, which Yordle will win. You guys tell me who you think is going to win. Do you think it's going to be the Tristana or the Heimerdinger? Heimer has a lot of press potential with his turrets. Tristana has a lot of press potential with her uh, her autos that do some explosion along with her E. Um, so I'm excited to see who wins that. That could be where the game's decided, if you ask me. You've got Gwen into Pantheon. Gwen can get rid of the stun that comes out of Pantheon, but Pantheon is still a very lethal champion. Um, and his alt gives him a lot of roaming potential paired with that with the Nocturne. And you could have a 2v2 turn into a 4v2 very quickly. Amumu into Nocturne. Um, man. Amumu into Nocturne, that's going to be just a fun one to see. I feel like the Nocturne outputs a lot of damage, but as that Amumu gets tankier and tankier, that'll mean less and less, and he'll be able to survive. You've got the Rakan and the Sivir over here. Again, like I said, Leona Samira, very deadly duo. If they're able to get their engaged, and she's able to either peel or engage for that Samira and let her stack up her combos post-level 6, that Samira is going to have a very fun time. But you do have the charm coming out of Rakan, the spell shield that she, uh, the Sivir can use. And so we find ourselves getting ready to get into this draft right now. We've got all the teams laid out. It's going to be a Heimerdinger top. I love to be wrong. That's what I was hoping for. Ah, oh, I love it. We've got a Heimerdinger top going into the Gwen. We've got a Pantheon going into the Tristana. Um, and then everything else is playing out just like we expected. So if you're watching, let me know who you think won the draft. Is it the Heimerdinger Nocturne, Pantheon, Samira, Leo t Leona team on the side of Limitless Havoc? Or is it the Lamorod, Limpin' Lions with Gwen, Amumu, Tristana, Sivir, and Rakan? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the chat. And if you haven't done it yet, take a minute, hit the follow button. I do this almost every day of the week. I'd love to have you stop by and watch a couple more scrims. Um, anywhere between bronze and challenger i cast it all so come and check it out as we get into the game though this is going to change a little bit both team comps do look good i, I think it's uh, interesting you've got tanks on both sides now both of those are engaging tanks samira samira does have a little bit more through leona offering peel but you have the charm coming out of rakan i think ah see i hate to try and call which team's better and which team's worse um, the truth being, I think that the side with Nocturne and Pantheon, both of those semi-global alts are going to give them a lot of options to play around skirmishes and outnumber the enemy team. And I think that's exactly what you need to win some of these fights, especially if you're looking at like an Amumu or a Tristana and a Sivir. 
you've got a lot more DPS coming out from the side of the red um, Lim Lamrod Limpin Lions. Might just call them Triple L for short. But you have a lot more damage coming out from the Tristan and the Sivir in a team fight that it might make sense to have that Nocturne, that Pantheon, be able to jump down and turn a mid roam from the side of red into a 4v3 out of nowhere. It depends on where people are on the map. It depends on how it's played. It depends on who gets up early. You know, if for whatever reason this Graggy Patty isn't really good on Tristana or even mediocre and the Pantheon's able to shut her down, keep her off the gold, keep her off the CS, um, and not let her roam, and then get roams himself, it won't even matter. But uh, I'm excited to see how this match goes. And um, we're going to go ahead and take a little break while everybody gets loaded in. Thank you and stay tuned for Game 3 in the series between Havoc, uh, Limitless Havoc, and Lamrod Limpin' Lions. All right, let's take a look at some of the summoner spells we have. Teleport coming out on both the top laners. Exhaust on the Tristana and Ignite on the Pantheon. No flash on the Gwen. And double Ignite for the supports. This is going to be a fun game. I love to see it. And again, as we get loaded in, this is a final game, a tiebreaker, if you will, between the Lamrod, Limpin' Lions and Limitless Havoc. Limitless Havoc on the blue side, Lamrod, Limpin' Lions on the red side. Both have won a game in the series. Limitless Havoc won the first game in a very dominating fashion. Lamrod, Limpin' Lions won the second game in a very dominating fashion. So this is going to be a very fun match, and I am excited for it. Let's go! As both teams enter onto the rift get everything pulled up so the viewers can see what they want to see here just kidding and here we go as the champions enter the rift we see the buys coming through corrupting potion going on to the pantheon challenge and smite for nocturne while we got the chilling smite over on the amumu everything else is pretty uh standard and we will see the team scatter on to the rift. Welcome to rift. And we have a five-man stack from the side of Limitless Havoc going on. They will get spotted out by the Amumu. And they're going to keep going. The vision comes down. They're not able to clear it out. And that will be a little bit of a failed attempt there. Red team dropping some deep vision, taking advantage of knowing where all the blue members were. And going to go ahead and drop that down. Nocturne back, switching over to a sweeper. Lots of pings coming out from the red side. They might want to try and stack up for a a little bit of a cheese in the tribe bush. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but I do see that Amumu looks like he's going to be starting his red buff instead of his 
blue buff on the bot side. So red is going to maybe step up a little bit here. Who knows? And this fight is underway. Mid doing a lot of trading early. I love to see that. We've got the Mumu starting on his top side by himself. Gwen is not going to leash him at all. Tisk tisk Gwen. Always look after your jungler and they will do the same for you. And uh, they might have done that just so they don't know where a Mumu starts, but I'm pretty sure he popped out on vision there, and so they're gonna know that he's top side. <clears throat> and this could be the side of Lamrod Limpin Lions getting to level two first as they start to crash their wave in a little early and put the pressure on here. Nocturne is going to do a full bot side clear, it looks like, and he might be in the area level two to get a little bit of extra damage down on this red side with the way they're pushed up. We'll have to see which way he goes. There's the stun, the full combo coming out of Pantheon, and he is able to get twite, quite the trade on to the Tristana. That's level two for the side of red. Are they going to try and abuse it? They are not going to have the opportunity to, and that is level two for the side of Limitless Havoc. State of the map pretty equal across the board. Nothing too crazy going on right now. There's the Pantheon. Heavy trades again coming out on that Tristana. He is not afraid to trade out. And uh, I'm excited to see how this goes. If he's able to get another one of those with his Ignite, he might be able to lock up the kill on the Tristana. That's a Dark Harvest stack going over to Sivir as they are just blowing up this Leona. Not quite tanky enough yet to be standing up that far and chasing a little early. She gets taken down quite a bit of Mumu in the area. He's going for that bottom scuttle, and he could put himself in position to get first blood onto the bot lane by locking up that Leona or locking up that Sivir. We'll have to see what happens. And up in the top lane, um, just taking a quick look at the map, you can see Heimerdinger very aggressively playing, keeping that Gwen pushed in. Puts himself at real potential to be ganked, but Amumu is bot side, so it won't matter for right now. That's the stun. There's some damage coming down. She drops her W a little late, but she is able to survive the attack, going in and trying to trade out onto him. Now you've got the Tristana playing up forward into the Pantheon, but he still trades quite a bit of damage onto her. And you've got Nocturne hovering in the area. Amumu hovering on the bot side. Finally shows on vision, and they're aware where he's at. Roaming up towards the mid lane. Nocturne might have a friend joining him there in the mid lane. And we could see another fight brewing. <coughs> This could be the longest it's taken for first blood in the series. I wish I would have timed it. There's the jump in from the Tristana. There's the stun. And it will be the Pantheon who falls first to the side of Lamrod Lip and Lions. Now we've got the Nocturne taking some damage from this Tristana. She flashes. She continues to get the shots. The turret shot follows her out. And that will be a trade kill over in favor of Pantheon. It'll be a two for one trade in favor of the Limitless. Ha I'm sorry. The Lamrod Lip and Lions. There's the knockup. There's the ignite. There's the stun coming out. A lot of damage coming through. Not able to lock up the kill, but there it is. Sivir will get the kill onto the Leona. Flash is coming out from both Rakan and Samira. The heal comes down. A lot of damage going on to that Samira. She gets the kill onto the Rakan. She's able to dash away. The flush comes out of Sivir, and she's able to lock up two kills. That is going to be two kills going in favor of Sivir. One kill over two Samira. I agree. I do think that uh, Amumu needed to tank that up if he would have gone in there first, but I think the Tristana flashed in before the Amumu could take the turret, even though they were both moving in that direction. So I don't know if there was really the opportunity for the Mumu to uh, take that. Either way, though, we have about a thousand gold in the pocket. More of Lim, uh, I'm just going to call you guys Limp and Lions because I can't keep doing the triple L, otherwise I'll have a stroke or something. So the Limp and Lions do find themselves with about a thousand gold lead. Two more kills, and Rakan maybe getting caught out here. The Q, oh, oh, the Q landed, but he was able to dash away and survive. Nocturne going to get spotted out on vision, and Tristana knows to give a little bit more respect and play towards the top side of the map.
Good jump away from the Pantheon. Pantheon wanting to do his all-in kit and just make things happen. Meanwhile, that Gwent taking almost half her health in that trade on from the Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger finds himself up almost a full two waves at this point. He is in a very dominant position in the top lane. Blue. Everybody be quiet. The blue lane is going to do a cheese. And there comes the stun onto the Sivir. Damage coming out on the Rakan. He's able to dash away. No summoner is blown. They don't have any to blow. Um, but now you've got the Mumu in the area. They try and get lost on vision. The Leona goes in, stuns the Mumu, but he is still able to lock down and get his R off on the, on the Samira. Damage coming down. Sivir wanting to go in. That is going to be one kill going over to... There's Pantheon. He locks up the trade kill on to the Mumu. However, Sivir is able to trade the kill on to Leona. It's a 2v1 in the bot lane. Pantheon versus Sivir and Rakan. He's going to go ahead and back out of here. That was a 2 for 1 trade still in favor of the Lamrod Lippin' Lions. And it will be a 3 to 6 overall state of the map. And right now, we see Amumu playing towards the top side. Heimerdinger quite pushed in. Amumu going to take advantage of that. No vision in the tri bush. The engage comes out on Gwen. Amumu rotating. The ignite comes down. This could be a kill going over in favor of Gwen. And it's a solo kill for Gwen. She was able to lock it down. Amumu doesn't even get the assist. Good job to the Gwen. And Amumu thinking about doing Rift Herald, but it looks like he's just going to uh, run it on down and start farming again. What's he doing? He doesn't know what he's doing. There he is. He's going on Rift. Meanwhile, blue team starting up the Drake. This is a Mountain Drake. It will be theirs. We're going to see a Cloud Drake next, and that means we'll have an Ocean or an Infernal Soul, two of my favorites. So let's see how that goes. Here comes the Nocturne ult. Here comes the Leona, and it's 3v2 in favor of Limitless Havoc. But the side of Limpin' Lions is able to get out of there and make sure that they do not get a kill traded over. Very well played with the disengage from those two to get out of there. And they are going to go ahead and reset. Maybe. No, they're going to hang out in the area. They're not worried about it. Nocturne's already come. Use his ult. Why not? And it looks like a Mumu saying he did call to tank it, but the Tristana went in just a hair earlier than he expected. That's okay. I still think it worked out in your favor. There's the E. There's the Q. There's the damage. The knockout comes on to the Samira. She's trying to land her ult. She does land her ult. She's able to kill over the Rakan. The Rakan is not able to get the Ignite onto the Samira. And that's going to be a one-kill trade in favor of Samira. We've now got a fight breaking out in the mid and the bot lane. Samira trying to pick up that... Uh, uh, yeah. Sivir trying to pick up that kill onto the Samira with her Q, but she's not able to lock it up. There's the E. Comes down. Amumu in the area. Leona trying to create as much peel and opportunity for the Samira as she can. Maybe let her trade out a kill onto the... Ooh, does not work. Oh, it does work. Oh, my God. Samira is able to stay alive for just a little bit longer and help that Pantheon lock up the kill onto the Sivir. She now finds himself in a 2v1 that he does not want to be in, and that's going to be the ult from the Tristan locking down the kill onto the Pantheon. We've got a fight breaking out top lane. A lot of damage coming onto the uh, Heimerdinger from the Gwen. Gwen taking a lot of aggro from the turrets and from the... This could be anybody's fight topside. They're both at one health. They're going to walk away, and I'm surprised no kills will come of that. I for sure. Oh, and Nocturne flashes in, gets the Q, and will secure the kill on to the Gwen. Right place, right time. Don't know if he needed a flash, but if it feels good, do it. Who's going to argue with you? That means that this game is still about 2,000 gold to 10 minutes, still in favor of the Limpin' Lions. The side of the Limitless Havoc team does have a Drake in their favor. And, um, yeah. 
Now, there was a lot going on in the top, so I might have missed it, but it does appear that the side of Limpin' Lions was able to drop the Rift Herald down on the bot side and get a couple extra turret plates in their pockets. So we will see the second Rift Herald joining the map here in about three minutes, and we will see which team decides to put that as a prio, if it will be the side of Limpin' Lions getting both of them, or if, oh, Khan gets caught out, the EQ stun lands from the Leona. Samira dropping some damage, and she's able to get her combo off and get the ult and lock up the kill onto the Rakan. That is twice now that he has had that happen, and unfortunate for him. Gwen trading bot side. Now you've got Sivir up into the Heimerdinger. We've got Matt, uh, lane trades coming all across this game. Sivir doing a great job of staying alive into this Heimerdinger. She's putting the pressure on him. You've got Rakan roaming up to the top side. Excuse me as I just take a quick stretch here. There we go. You got Rakan roaming up to the top side now, putting the 2v1 on to the side of Limpid Lions in the top. And you've got Gwen trying to sustain through the attacks of Samira and Leona. I think their goal here is you've got turrets up for another minute and a half. Let Sivir collect as much of that as she can and get as big as she can as quick as she can. She's gone Duskblade. She's gone Dark Harvest. She's looking to blow people up in these fights, and she's probably going to be able to do it segment 5 and 1 right now. There's the Dark Harvest proc onto the Sivir again. I want to check out real something real quickly. Bear with me here. Let's see. Not you. She's already at 8 Dark Harvest stacks at 12 minutes. That's looking really good. We're back on the directed cam. Nocturne Hawk comes kind of down. He is able to get the kill onto the Pantheon. The uh, Moo Moo is able to trade those kills over onto the Pantheon and the Nocturne. So not a very successful gank as a Moo Moo is becoming quite the tanky boy. And Lamrod Limpin' Lions finds themselves getting some extra turrets, getting some extra gold, getting some extra kills. And they are up 3,000 gold at this point. And this Mumu is going to be a house. He has already completed his Sunfire. He is already working on his Bramble, I mean, on his uh, Thorn Mail. He's got the Bramble Vest completed. He is going to be a huge threat in some of these fights. He, a long, he's got to be the answer to the, uh, to the Leona. Leona is going to be just as tanky. Her damage output won't be the same, but she also offers a little bit more CC, so we'll have to see who plays well, the Leona or the Amumu in these team fights. There comes the Pantheon, going to try and lock it down. The Gwen uses her W to try and get the CC to go through, but she will get killed by the Pantheon with the assist from Leona and Samira. Looks like Sivir and Rakan are going to go ahead and respectfully back out, as it is a 5v4, and the blue team is everybody on deck, and they will lock up their second drake of the game and it's going to be an ocean soul that we will get to see on this map a little bit more honey fruit a little bit more bushes and a lot more kills and we'll do a quick little gold check in just so everybody can see where we're at um Gwyn and Heimerding are relatively even. The Mumu is up about 2,000 gold on the Nocturne. Looks like the uh, Tristana is up about 1,000 gold on the Pantheon. And this Sivir is only about 500 gold up onto the, uh, the Samira. I thought that gold lead would be a little bit different at this point. So we've got still a relatively close match. Blue team possibly stacking up for uh, a late game rotate across uh, the Samira and the Rakan, but we'll have to see what happens. Keep an eye on bot lane. Meanwhile, Nocturne trying to go in on the Tristana gets caught out by the Amumu. He's going to clear vision and back out. There goes the E. Doesn't land. Rakan trying to get the knock up. He does, but he takes a lot of damage in the process. Sivir gets the shield, but there's the Samira ult coming down. A lot of damage coming onto the Sivir. Nobody's going to get a kill there in the bot lane, but they're not done yet. They want, they're want. they saying, I want some more. Here's the Samira chasing down. And this Samira has no fear. The E again missing from the Leona. She is fishing, and she's catching nothing. We've got Heimerdinger and Gwen back up in the top lane. And we have a hell of a game so far. Keep watching, guys. Let me know how you think it's going to go.
We've got a fight breaking over out the Rift Herald. That is two kills going over to the side of Limitless Havoc because they're able to trade over onto the Gwen and the Amumu, and that will put them in the position to be able to get this second Rift Herald of the map of the game. And we're going to see them take it possibly mid and try and put some pressure on this mid turret, let Pantheon start to roam around a little bit. Ping's coming out to defend the mid turret, but I don't know there's much they can do. All the minions are gone. There goes the Rift Herald. Tristana finds herself in a position where she has to fight two people and the Rift Herald. Boom, it connects. Boom, it falls. And that is going to be second turret? Yeah, so first turret did end up going over to the Smear and the Leona in the bot side, and that'll be the second turret going over to the side of Limitless Havoc. They now have this game within 1,000 gold of each other. This is the kind of game we wanted to see. Rabbit Swamp Donkey, you are very correct. The gold is about to be even, and it is. There's only about less than a thousand gold difference between the two teams. You guys are up two drakes with the ocean. I'm sorry, with the cloud in the mountain. Ocean Soul joining the map, and we're going to have another Drake spawning in about 1.30. I wouldn't be surprised if we try and see either team try and get a pick and then roam over towards the dragon. And on a point I wanted to bring up, Lam uh, Lamrod Limp and Lions did a great job last game of making sure that they were able to control vision. The Maokai from their team, I'm sorry, the... Oh, here it comes. There's the Nocturne Alt, Pantheon Alt coming in. There's the stun from Leona, and that is going to be a kill onto the Sivir. They get themselves caught out. However, this Pantheon is quite tanky, it looks like. He's not falling to all the damage coming through. Gwen chasing the Heimer. But he's able to zone his. That's going to be a trade kill over onto the side of Gwen. And that's a 2 for 0 oh in favor of Limitless Havoc. There's more follow-ups going left and right. They're trading kills back and forth. And the blue team is able to get a 4 for 3 trade. A lot of those kills going on to the Pantheon as he's able to follow up the right place at the right time. How is casting this versus normally doing like Diamond and Master level? Um... I've casted everything from Bronze all the way down to... Uh, all the way up to Challenger. Uh, it's usually more exciting. Challenger players are a little bit more reserved, a little bit more, you know, and I'm, this is nothing against the teams that we're watching right now, just to be clear. There is just a difference between a master challenger level player and a gold plat level player. That's just the way of it, right? So we do get to see the Ocean Soul, uh, Ocean Drake going over to the side of Limitless Havoc, and that is going to be the third Drake of the game, putting them on Soul Point. So, um, it's, it's really fun. Um. So I do mostly do Diamond, Plat, Master. That's where um, most of the ELO games that I cast are, but I'm willing to do anything. Uh, oh, here comes the Nocturne getting in on the uh, Sivir. He's able to drop down the Fear. The damage comes out, and he's able to lock up the kill on the Sivir. That is one more kill going over to the side of Limitless Havoc, and that is going to give them a slight gold lead at this point. And we've got pings coming out left and right. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a little bit more fun to do the lower-level games just because we usually see a lot more... Um, you see a lot more trading. You'll see a little bit more misplays, so there's an opportunity for more um, fights and things of that nature. The plat master level games are still good because they have great strategy, and when they do make a play, it's normally really well thought out. But I love to cast either game. It's, it's still a fun setup for me, and I enjoy it. Thank you very much for asking. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and hit the follow button. I do this stuff all the time. I'd love to have you guys here and watching some of the other streams that I do. I cast games almost every night of the week, and if I'm not in here, I'm casting for other organizations, so thank you. And now we've got a teleport coming in from the side of the Limpin' Lions as the blue team tries to start up this Baron. Looks like... Uh, Looks like the uh, Rakan was trying to come in and drop his art, but he got caught up, wasn't able to use it. That's going to be Leona falling, and we've got the Muma falling. It's a one-for-one one trade, but the jungler from the side of Limpin' Lions is down. Now it's a two-for-two two as Gwen and Samira both fall out. 
And I don't know if it was the play to try and bring that pressure up. It was a two-for-two two trade. They are still tied in gold. They do have more objectives in terms of both turrets and dragons. Heimerdinger playing a little forward, outnumbered three to one here. There's the there's the alt coming down from uh, Nocturne. He's able to get the fear off, but it does not land. The turn on it, and he is going to get blown up by the Sivir. The Tristan is able to match over and get the kill on to the Heimerdinger. Pantheon coming in, trying to lock up the kill, at least on this Rakan. Good step, sidestep from the Rakan for his Q. There comes more damage. He's trying to bust it out. He's not able to lock up either kill. He does get the kill onto the Rakan, but Tristana will lock up the kill onto the Pantheon. That is a three for two trade in favor of the Limpin' Lions. No, I uh, I will stream uh, I will stream and shoutcast for any game. I'd like to do it. I'm an amateur shoutcaster. I'm trying to get in with a couple different organizations. I have a local place out here in Phoenix that I do it for. Um, but I'll do it for any. What I do is I literally just look for scrims and ask them randomly. Hey, can I stream uh, your scrim and shoutcast it? So, if you guys play games and you want me to shoutcast the games and think it would be fun, let me know. I'm happy to do it. And that's going to be Samira getting blown up by the side of Limp and Lions. And now we see Leona having to flash away so that she doesn't die. A lot of damage coming out, but she will manage to walk away with her life. It is a 4v5 in favor of Limp and Lions as they try and put themselves in position to possibly fight over the Drake. Here's the Yamumu alt, the uh, Heimerdinger getting blown up. Quite a lot of damage coming down, and Yamumu will fall. Now we've got the uh, Pantheon trying to run away, but he gets blown up. Nocturne and Leona both fall, and that's going to be Limpid Lions able to get four kills over in their favor. It is an official ace, even though Samira wasn't there for that entire fight during the second half. They're going to go ahead and start melting down Baron. Uh, Prods is somebody that I uh, am looking to cast for uh, tomorrow night, actually. And we see that the Baron is falling. He's about a quarter health. You've got the Gwen stepping away since she doesn't want to take any more damage from that thing. That's going to be Baron going on four members of the side of Limpin' Lions. And they are going to reset. Sever deciding she wants some of that jungle and she's going to keep on going. So yeah, I don't know Prots per se. But uh, he put out an ad for a caster and I responded. So I'm going to be casting for his league tomorrow night. So if you know Prots, tune into his stream, uh, tune into his stream, and you'll be able to watch me. Here's the Pantheon alt. It comes down. They're trying to chase down the Rakan. The Pantheon, uh, the Nocturne alt. The Fear come down. The Flash gets out of there, and he's not able to get anything away. A lot of damage coming through, but he's turned into a little bit tankier boy now. The Nocturne not able to get the kill, and they find themselves in a 3v4. Limpin' Lions chasing down. Now it's a 5v4. Amumu's in the wrong place at the wrong time as the fight's breaking out on the top side of the map. No kills will come of that. That's just a lot of trading going out onto both sides. Um, in terms of damage, but no kills traded over. Limpin' Lions finds themselves with a 5,000 gold lead at this point. The Nocturne was a huge shift in their favor. Um, we'll see if they can put it to any use here. Drake spawning in 10 seconds could be their first Drake of the game to deny the uh, side of Limitless Havoc from getting the soul. Blue really needs us to stay in the game. You're absolutely correct. Um, I'll answer that here in just a second for you, uh, Insanely Wicked. I don't want to become famous, but thank you for asking. I just want to have fun. We've got the Drake getting started up by the side of Red Team Blue, starting to put pressure on it. It's down about halfway. We could see a smite fight. It's going to be a relatively equal 50-50. Tristan is able to get the kill onto the Heimerdinger. That's going to be the Samira falling down. The Drake goes over to the side of Limitless Havoc, and they're able to get the soul, but they will trade over four kills for it. Was it worth it? We'll find out. Pantheon going to have to do some serious defense here. I don't think this is going to be the end of the game, but it does put them in a pickle. And uh, to answer your question, it's Insanity Wicked. Oh, it's ins it's Insanity Wrecked. My bad. Um, I have done casting with uh, Cap Mingus, uh, Lulu. Lulu16, I think, was the their name. They were more of an analyst role. Um, and besides that, I mostly just do it on my channel and with a couple friends. So I'm starting to branch out do casting with other organizations. So I'll let you know who I get to cast with tomorrow. That'll probably be one of the first times I get to cast. Not one of the first times I get to cast, but one of the first times I get to do a duo cast with somebody else. I have a friend named Slooper Cooper who does cast with me on my stream sometimes. 
but he doesn't like to commit three hours to doing it, so he normally just plays games instead. And that's going to be a turret going over in favor of the side of Limp and Lions as they're able to get that tier one turret in the bot lane. So it looks like they were able to make the inhib fall down in the mid lane. All the pressure in the world mid. They're able to get the tier one uh, bottom and top side turrets. They are having Baron fall off now. They've reset and we've got 5v5. However, it is an ocean soul in favor of the uh, Havoc, uh, Limitless Havoc team. And they could use that right now. They need the sustain through the team fights to give them an advantage as they find themselves down almost 9k gold at this point. I love that they're stacking for a pick. That's what you need to do when you're down like that is get a good skirmish, try and trade out on somebody, give yourself a numbers advantage, and then play from there. Otherwise, in your 5v5 team fighting, it looks like you've got a little bit of a disadvantage with that Amumu. He's got a bit more engaged than you want. The Leona isn't able to quite match it. She's having to use her let's engage uh, in stuns for Peel, and that's just not how you want to have a Leona used. So we are going to see a uh, little trading back and forth with the wave, but nothing too much. No objectives on the map for another two minutes or so. And so we could just see a good old-fashioned brawl happening here, a little ARAM style. Looks like a Moo Moo dropping a little vision so they make sure they don't get flanked. Very good vision control coming out of the side of the red team. They were able to do that last game as well. Um, their Maokai had a much higher vision score than the support from the side of Limitless Havoc, and that might have been not necessarily the game-winning factor, but certainly a factor as they were able to track rotations and get picks early and often. So we do see the red team hovering over here by Baron a minute and 20 seconds till it joins the map, and they're going to just hold down this area. They want to make sure that they are in position, that they have priority, Priority and that they don't have to worry about it. We could see, we do see all four members here. They're not on vision. Blue side has no idea that they're there. They're going to get tracked, spotted out. Leona could get blown up here very soon if she steps forward. Let's get this out of the way so that we can see all the fun breaking down. I would, absolutely. If you want, my, uh, my Twitter is Charles Elroy. My um, Discord is Charles Elroy. My Facebook is Charles Elroy. I'm Charles Elroy. Charles Elroy everywhere. Um, send me a DM and I'd love to set something up with you. Five member stack up in the bush here. Not on vision. No, they're not on vision. And they're just waiting. They know that the blue team has to respond and they're going to have to come towards Baron. Was that the Civeral? That was the, uh, no, that wasn't the Civeral. What was that? Yeah, that was the Shirelia's battle song. Okay. Oh, and here's the engage. The Pantheon going on to the Tristana. She's able to jump away. He's continuing to try and follow it up. You've got a lot of damage coming out. And who's going to be able on the falls first? Zonia is going left and right. Everybody's frozen. The Heimerdinger falls. The Leona falls. But now it's a two for two trade as Gwen and the Amumu fall. That's not the person you want to have fall during one of the fights. Is it is going to be the jungle that falls towards? Oh, that is a huge Q and it's going to blow up Samira. Uh, uh, Sivir. Now you've got the Tristana falling, and that is the blue team able to answer with an ace on their favor. They are now in a position to try and get back in this game. Let's do a quick check-in of the state of the map. They are now only 5,000 gold down when they were almost 10,000 gold down about five minutes ago. They've got all the drakes. They are going to go ahead and push on this Baron, and they're going to put themselves in a position where they are able to answer back and drag this game out a little bit longer. You've got three people here that you need to to go ahead and melt down this drake. The next person isn't going to spawn for two seconds. There's Gwen. She's on the map, but she's not going to be able to run over there. She's pinging towards Drake. They want to try and get the Elder Drake so that they have the chance to win a fight. And we're going to have to see how it goes as Heimerdinger teleports in. This is the Baron. They're going to back. They're not going to go for the Drake. It's up in 45 seconds, and we're going to see another fight break out here in just a couple moments. Everybody's running for the Drake. Leona, Pantheon, Nocturne, Samira, and Heimerdinger all running from the side of blue to get over by that Drake so that they can secure themselves five Drakes in a row this game. But we've got the side of red. Amumu up there first, but if he gets caught out, that could be very bad. You don't want to lose your jungle when it comes to a smite fight. Otherwise, you'll lose already. So let's see how this goes. They want to set up for a pick. They know they're not on vision. They're all going to drop down right there. Couple of them get caught out on vision, not worth it. And so now we could have another fight breaking out. Let's see how this goes. Keep in mind, the red team, Limpin Lions, is up about 5,000 gold, but they do not have the Ocean Soul to help sustain through some of those fights, and they do not have Pryo on the Dragon Pit as the Elder Dragon spawns. We see the red team dancing around, the blue team dancing around. Who is going to make the first mat, uh, first step? 
or first mistake. They're on vision on the red side. There comes the blast. Gwen almost getting knocked into the team, but they are going to go ahead and get off of it. Here it goes. The red team in position. They might start up the Drake. They're not going to. There's the Nocturnal. It comes down. He lands onto the uh, he lands onto the Sivir. He's not able to get the fear. He gets blown up. That kill is on to the Nocturne. And now you've got the Heimerdinger falling as well. It's a 3v5. Samira is able to bust out her ult and trades over three kills. It is now a two fears two. Amumu having to chase out and he will get killed. Triple kill in favor of the Samira. Huge ult for Samira. She is able to lock down three kills with her ult. And now they are going to go ahead and start up this Elder Drake. Sivir could try and steal, but we're going to have to find out what happens. The Elder is about half health. The Sivir is less than half health. There goes the poke. Not going to get it, and that's going to be the Elder Drake. Going in favor of Limitless Havoc. Now the Pantheon is certainly on the offensive as he's trying to hunt down the Sivir. He knows she's somewhere. Let's see, did he make the right guess? Yes, he did. He's able to lock down the kill, and the Elder Drake gives him just enough damage to close it out. Rapid Swamp Donkey, you're 100% correct. The Samir ult was well well over the Mumu alt as she was able to lock up her combos and get that kill. Very good job to the side of Limitless Havoc as we go ahead and do a quick state of the game check-in. We now see the gold almost a thousand gold, less than a thousand gold apart at this point. Wait, I can't do math. About 1,500. At 60,000 though, 1,500 doesn't really matter. It's not a huge thing. It's a single component difference somewhere on the map and it's probably not even on one person. So we've got a hell of a game going on. Baron's still on them. They've got the Elder Drake. You've got your Samir, uh, Sivir spawning in one second. She's on the map. It's a true 5v5 as we have the side of Limitless Havoc marching down. It's Insanity Wrecked. Are you egg as me? Let me know. Here you go. I see the fight coming on. We've got some people in the area. The Baron buff falls off. Yes, okay, thank you. I'll respond to you here in a little bit then. Thanks. And uh, they're going to back out, getting the inhib. They find themselves with a bit more prio on the map, having answered in the mid lane. And this is the game we want to see. They're rotating towards top side. They're going to clear out the jungle, and they might try and press in that tier one top turret and put themselves at an equal game state in terms of the turrets. Wow. What a game. Pantheon going to proxy. Let Samira go ahead and push that in and get that gold. We've got the red team trying to match, but they're spread out across the map and not grouped together. Heimerdinger having to back now. And the Mumu has decided to go less tank build. He went uh, Demonic Embrace. He's trying to put a little extra burn on some of those champions. Uh, Pantheon taking some turret shots. Leona taking some turret shots. That's four turret shots they didn't have to take, but that's okay. There's the flash. Tries to get the engage, but they're going to go ahead and knock down the turret, and that's an extra turret in favor of Limitless Havoc. We have a banger of a match going on. And they're going to go out, clear out vision, and reset. There goes the Samira poke, able to stop back the Leona. Might find that the uh, Leona and the Heimerdinger are going to get caught out here. Nocturne going to wait. Leona starting the back. And is this Rakan going to catch her out? No, he decides to go the other way. Good for her. Bad for him. Could have been the pick he needed to end here. I'll message you here in a little bit and respond. I appreciate it. I'm not ignoring you. Um, and we have Gwen going down to the bot lane, pushing that bot wave out, catching some of the experience. We've got everybody at level 16. That Pantheon is at level 17 now. Heimerdinger a little under under uh, underdeveloped. He's 15, but that's okay. He's getting there. We still love him. And we don't have any more objectives joining the map. Oh, we've got Baron in 45 seconds. And we see the blue team hovering in the area. They are saying that we want to push on the, uh, on the top side. Maybe get a pick as we know they're going to rotate up for Baron as well. Ping's coming out everywhere. They're going to set up. What's going to happen? We'll find out. The Amumu's getting... Not coming in the right way. They're on vision. I should do that. I don't... I'll have to do that another time. One of my first times. That's actually not a bad idea.
There we go. And so we've got a fight breaking out. The Nocturne Alt comes down. He's not able to get the fear off onto the Tristana. He is able to try and put some damage down. And that's going to be the Rakan getting blown up. That's going to be the Tristana falling down. That's going to be the uh, Sivir falling down. And that's a 3 for old trade in favor of the blue team. They're going to just march to end here. As the Gwen tries to defend, she won't be able to do too much here. You've got... You've got the Samira. You've got everybody here. The Amumu alt comes down, locking up a little bit of the team, but he is going to fall. No, he's able to get away. He's still able to live out. Gwyn is able to trade out a kill. Lots of Zonias. Pantheon follows up, gets the shutdown, and this could be the end of the game. Amumu is not going to be able to stop him, and that will be Limitless Havoc wrapping up the series with a 2-1 to -one defeat. Uh, two to one win in favor of Limitless Havoc over the Lamrod Limpin Lions. And this game was so fun. Thank you very much to Limitless Havoc. Thank you very, very much to the Lamrod Limpin Lions for letting me stream and cast this game. If you know those teams, give them some support, give them some love, follow them, and, uh, if you enjoyed this content, go ahead and hit the follow button for my stream. I do this kind of stuff almost every night of the week. I love having you guys here. Thank you very much for chatting with me, and we will catch you guys tomorrow night. Thank you very much, and have a great day.